Thanksgiving weekend in Illinois means high school football, and lots of it. Today and tomorrow, the Illinois High School Association brings together teams from around the state, from schools large and small, to see which is the best, to see which will be the 1990 state champions. From Illinois State University in Normal, Sports Channel presents the 1990 Illinois High School Association State Football Championships. Well, you are looking at Hancock Stadium here, the traditional site for the 1A through 6A Illinois State High School Championships. Hello again, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman. And once again, together with Jack McInerney, we're going to be bringing you all six state championship games right here on Sports Channel, together with Bill Gorley and Tom Stocker. Jack, uh, this is where everybody wanted to be at the beginning of the year. It has been a long road, a winding road, and a grinding road. Well, it certainly has been, Mike. This is what we call a second season, that championship season. These teams have played five games in the last four weeks, a total of 13 games. So that's half of another season. They've certainly deserved the right to be here, and it's going to be a great weekend of high school football. Well, our first game is the 1A championship, Bloomington Central Catholic, the home team, if you will, against Sterling Newman. We'll bring you the kickoff in just a minute. Nice open, Mr. Bob. Posey, ladies and gentlemen, does not know how to spell his own name. Other than that, he's a great coach. I want to know, is Schlarman a school, or is that something that goes on, on meatloaf? <laughs> really? You direct your attention to the 50-yard line. They're going to throw out the first official. Executive Secretary of the Illinois... Dan Boynton. I remember him when uh, McIntyre won. He was a defensive coach, right? Mm -hmm. Steve Adams, PA. Liz is making a presentation down there. Yes, retiring. Oh, okay. Getting ready for the 1A championship. These are, of course, the smallest schools, and they may be small in terms of enrollment, but they play some very tough and very professional type high school football, if you will. Sterling Newman Central against Bloomington Central. The Saints against the Comets. Let's go to our public address announcer now, Steve Adams. To present this plaque to you, an IHSA staff member on behalf of National Fair Racing. As it is in keeping that is the executive uh, the secretary of the Illinois High School Association, IIC, retiring executive secretary, LaVere Liz Ostroff. And we thought we'd give him a little face time on Illinois camera to congratulate him on his long career and also to congratulate him on his upcoming retirement. Liz Ostroff is making a presentation right now at the 50-yard line. Compete. Don, congratulations. And it's going to... Associate Executive, Assistant Executive Secretary Don Robinson. Don will be our guest at halftime, but he's kind of camera shy right now, so he's saving all the good words for, uh, for our microphones. Don does a great job with the high school football. He's in charge of football and wrestling and really does a, a super job throughout the state. Weather-wise, we have a beautiful day. You can see it, especially if you're veterans of this competition. This is an unusually nice day this time of year. We do have a 25-mile-an-hour wind blowing out of the west. And the temperature is going to get into the mid-50s by the time we're well into uh, action here. And you can see that wind is really whipping. Let's pick up the starting lineup. There is Mike Laposi, the coach of Sterling Newman. The starting defensive lineup first, the head coach, Mike Paposi. 
And there is Mike. Let's introduce and his in, starting defensive number lineup. Number 34, with Steve David Molina. At left tackle, number 85, Josh Kelly. At right tackle, number 77, Jeff Rainey. At right end, number 11, Jamie McKinley. At nose guard, number 31, Brandon Ramirez. At linebacker, number 41, John Crick. At linebacker, number 61, Brian Burrs. At defensive back, number 42, Jay Crick. At defensive back, number 24, Jose Quinones. At defensive back, number 80, Andy Miller. And at safety, number 14, Jason Graham. Those are the comments of Sterling Newman Central Catholic High School. Coach is Mike Papasi. Mike in his 11th season. Let's head coach, 13, for the that's season. Sterling Newman. Now let's go to the home team, Bloomington Central Catholic, coached by Dan Boynton, that man right there. Dan Boynton. At tight end, number 89, Josh Sherman. At left tackle, 71, Ken Rhodes. At left guard, number 64, Joe Mintis. At center, number 55, Jeff Flynn. At right guard, number 50, Jim Conklin. At right tackle, number 75, Herb Burdett. At split end, number 8, Jeff Huffman. At quarterback, number 17, Rob Zanoni. At halfback, number three, Jason Messamore. At flanker back, 25, Daryl Mitchell. And the fullback is number 12, Brian Kiley. Those are the Saints of, the Saints of Bloomington Central Catholic, Catholic, a very young team, only five seniors on the team. Meanwhile, on the other side, Sterling Newman, a veteran bunch. They bring back 17 of their starters of the 22 offense and defense. The officials today, the referee in the, in the white hat, Mike Stivers, the rest of the crew, the line judge, Gerald Herman, back judge, Eugene Sowalik, the umpire, Dean Schulmeister, and uh, Albert Van Horn is the line judge. Well, now let's welcome uh, the third member of our staff. Joe Passion is down there on the field. Joe, can you hear me? What's it look like down there uh, as far as the weather is concerned? Beautiful day, but do we have any surprises? Well, I think the only surprises tonight and this morning, rather, Mike and Jack, will be the win and how the specialty teams deal with it. Jack, you know that's always a problem every game. And a key, both coaches this morning have told me that the specialty teams are going to be a key in this football game. How much one team does more than the other will depend on how well they throw the ball. And both teams will throw the ball. As you know, Bloomington Central can't throw the ball, but they don't worry about throwing it long because they rarely do anyways. They will throw the ball short and keep to the short, good, low, high percentage passes. We'll see a lot of the running, and there should be no problem in the option running offense that you'll see today in Newman. Both teams field the AstroTurf practice earlier this week on their fields at Northern and here at Illinois State for both teams will be ready for today's game. Back up to you guys. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. Hang on those sidelines and stay warm. Brandon Ramirez is the kicker. The kicker for Sterling Newman. And the deep people will be number uh, three, Jason Messamore. And number 25, Daryl Mitchell. And Brian Benitez, I believe I called him Brandon. It's Brian Benitez, he is a junior. He is set to kick it off. And we'll be underway right here in Normal. Kick is short. Taken by Messamore after the bobble by one of the up men, Jason Messamore. 
to the 35-yard line. Good field position to start for the Saints of Bloomington Central Catholic. You can see that wind effect of that kick right off the bat coming from the west. It really slowed that ball down. Offensively, Rob Zanoni, the quarterback, he is a senior. Brian Kiley, the fullback, Messamore, the tailback. And you can see the wide receivers, Mitchell, Sherman, and Jeff Huffman. They are the starting front. Rhodes, Mintis, Jeff Lynn, Conklin, and Herb Burdett. First and 10 from call at the 35-yard line. They come out in the eye. Right away to the pass. And it is complete to Jeff Huffman. And Huffman up close to first down yardage, brought down by Jason Graham, number 14 for Sterling Newman. And right away, you can see Bloomington is coming out. They have a balanced attack, and they are going to start by throwing the ball. Well, they bring this back in motion. You can see right here in the uh, outside back just does a, a little curl route and kind of drifts to the outside. Is a sprint by the quarterback. He's wide open. They dumped the ball to him. You know, the reason for this, obviously, out throughout the season, they've done this. They've thrown the ball 220 times, Mike. And they've completed 123, so they're real happy with their passing game. Should be a good matchup of contrasting styles as they'll bring out the change to see if uh, Bloomington does get a first down here on the first play. Sterling Newman, on the other hand, is going to be a real grinded-out offense. They throw maybe half a dozen times a game, but they are much, much bigger than Central. First down, though, for the Saints. Well, the Saints better take advantage of having the ball because... Uh, Sterling Newman is notorious for running that clock, so they have to take advantage of this first series to get good field position here to keep the ball away from Newman because they might not get it back in the, in the first quarter. 5-2 defense, Molina Kelly Ramirez, the nose guard right there. And we go across the front with... First and 10 from the 44. Wide open. Once again, it is Huffman. And Jeff Huffman brought down by Andy Miller, but he gets across midfield to the 47-yard line of Comets territory. Two plays, two passes. Now, this is a three-step drop, one, two, three, and throw, and he's wide open because that corner dropped off quite a bit. And uh, during the season, Huffman caught 45 passes, so they'll play that all day long. If that corner's going to play soft, they'll go to that three-step drop and drill the ball out there. That's off from the top of your picture to your left as you take a look at the defense of Sterling Newman. Second down, called a long two. This time up the middle, Brian Kiley, the fullback. Brian Kiley, with a touchdown, 189 yards in the semifinal, gets his first carry of the day, brought down by John Crick and Jeff Reine. Reine's name we're going to be hearing a lot, so we'll be hearing uh, Crick as you take a look at Dan Boynton. Crick at 6'2", 228, also plays uh, fullback in the offense. And there is Brian Kiley. His brother Tony will come into the offense, too. Brian Kiley, the leaning ground gainer for the Saints this season, nearly 950 yards. So, again, a first down, this time the ball at the 42-yard line of Sterling Newman. Clock at 10.41 here in the first period. Now we're getting a momentary delay right here, and the ball is in play. Time is running, and here we go. First and 10. Good look at Rob Zanoni. And the give once again to the first man through is Brian Kiley. And Brian Kiley across the 40 to the 37, brought down by number 61, Brian Burrs. And number 85, Josh Kelly for Sterling Newman. Gain of four, second and six. Good mixing up of the plays right here for Bloomington off the bat. Well, what they're trying to do is if they can keep those linebackers inside from getting away from their drop areas with that fullback, then the passing game will open up. So they're playing both parts. But also watch how close that fullback is to the quarterback. He can really hit to the line of scrimmage very quickly because he's so close. In motion is Mitchell. This time it's the tailback. Jason Messamore, his first carry, stopped him there by Riney. Gain of maybe a yard, and that's being generous. So a good defensive stop there for Sterling Newman. And at this point early in the game, they needed it to look at Mike Paposi. Well, as you did mention, Mike, it is a nice mix of play calling here on this first initial drive. And uh, they want to make sure that they don't get uh, Newman just dropping off the play pass. So they're going to have them respect that inside running game. This is Mitchell flying to the right. Huffman to the left on third down. Looking for Huffman and overthrown. Defensed over there by Andy Miller. And now with fourth down and four. 
little choice here. Well, this is a three-step fade route. They're playing the corners up, and he just runs a go. And you can see he's gotten them beat, but the ball just carries a little bit too much and had been out of bounds had he caught the ball anyway. But the reason for that was that corner was up so tight that's an automatic to go to that fade route up the sideline. Well, uh, it will be a punt with Graham and Jay Crick deep. Todd Kurz gets it away. Headed for the coffin corner, but no. Goes into the end zone automatic touchback, and Sterling Newman will get the ball with 9-11 left to go. Interesting stat here, Mike, will be to see how long they control the football. That's been their, their strength all year long, is that they just hang on to that ball and drive it down the field and run that clock. Had a rocky start to the season. Two losses in their first three games, then they've come back to win 10 in a row, have the Comets of Sterling Newman. And now it's their first offensive series. They'll start it from the 20. The quarterback is Jason Graham. They'll work out of the wishbone. Going in motion there is Jay Crick. And the give is to John Crick, his twin brother, and John Crick at 220-plus pounds, brought down by Jim Conklin, gets about four yards. Got a set of twins in the backfield, Jay and John Crick. Both are uh, seniors. Jason Graham is the quarterback. He's 5'10". He can dunk a basketball. I don't know how much good it's going to do him as a football player, but it shows his athleticism. Jay Crick, David Molina scored four touchdowns in the semifinal. Draghi, Profiter, Burrs, Highbarger, and Riney, the offensive line. Second down, six to go on the 24. Again, you'll see it exclusively, the wishbone. It will mix up in the backfield right there, and Jason Graham is going to be thrown for a loss back at his 20. John Conklin, defensive right end, a junior, 6'1", 170 pounds, coming in to make the stop, loss of four. Well, you can see Graham right here riding the fullback, and right there was going to be the second back, the belly series, bad handoff, and he picks the ball up and tries to make something happen. Don't be nervous if Graham runs with the football because he scored 14 touchdowns rushing as the third leading rusher on the team. Loss of two, third and eight. Mitchell McDonald, Rose Conklin, defense. Kylie uh, Jim Conklin, the linebacker with Connor, set the secondary in a minute. On third down, the give to Molina. And Molina well short of the first down, about to the 24-yard line. Tony Kylie brings him down. And Sterling Newman, with a fourth and five, will bring out their punter. John Crick is already out on the field, and he will be punting it to Messamore and Kylie, Brian Kylie. John Crick, you see, gets lots of distance on his punts, especially for high school, just under 39 yards. He also spends a lot of time on the field going both ways and also being a kicker. Shanks it here, doesn't get much at all. He gets a good roll. But it's going to be excellent field position for Bloomington. Boy, did he get a good roll. I don't think the punt went more than 10 yards, but it goes to the 46-yard line of Sterling Newman, where Bloomington will take over excellent field position. Well, that definitely is a plus for Bloomington to be able to get good field position like that. In the past, the norm has been, in speaking with the Newman coaches, that they're able to drive the ball down the field. And if they do have a drive stall, it's usually at midfield where they can kick themselves in the good field position by putting the, the opponent, opponent team into the uh, coffin corners. Darrell Mitchell out there on the flank. He is now in motion in the eye. First man through Tony uh, Brian Kiley and Brian Kiley gets short yardage brought down by Riney and John Frick to the 44 yard line. Call it four, second and six. A little cutback trap right up the middle there, showing one direction, get those linebackers flowing and cutting back against the grain. Ryan Kiley, the sophomore, he lines up. 948 yards on the season. Now they go into their ace package, the single back. Quick shot, it's complete. Close to first down yardage, caught by Josh Sherman, the tight end. Andy Miller brings him down about a yard and a half short. <laughs> Let's go down to Joe Passion on the field. Go ahead, Joe. Well, one thing you guys may be able to see from upstairs more clearly than I can here on the field, but it's very apparent that the defense for Newman is spreading out the gaps on the defensive line. They are inviting the run. They want this team to throw the football long or run the football, and that may help them defense their pass, short passing game a little bit better. Split backs now, third and one. 
from the 43. Again, the motion. Now the pitch. And Brian Kiley, excellent play by Molina, takes him down for a loss. Good, strong pressure by Sterling Newman and Dave Molina coming up to throw him for the loss from his left end position. You can see a quick pitch here and that tackle pulling, and he goes right by number 34, the man he should have blocked. And the big play coming up there for a loss against Bloomington. Brings up a fourth down. We'll see Kurz again with Graham and Crick down in double safety. Graham is your deep man. And Kurz gets a high floating snap, but no pressure. And he shoots it for the corner, but gets it about the 22, 23 yard line. Four minutes, 55 seconds to go. No score. We'll be back in a minute at the 1A championship. Bloomington against Sterling Newman. Well, in a game of field position, neither team after the first march by Bloomington has been able to do much. So now Sterling Newman will move from its own 23-yard line, first and 10. Under five minutes to go, first quarter, no score. And the give to Molina, and David Molina gets some decent yardage to about the 27. Jim Conklin making the stop. Conklin, the middle linebacker, six foot one, 220 pounds. And there is Molina with his numbers, nearly eight yards of carry, 16 touchdowns, and he is one of the 2,000-yard rushers for Newman. He and Jay Crick, over 1,000. Wilmington, they don't have a 1,000-yard rusher. They have a much more balanced attack on second down. Going to Jay Crick, and Crick across the 30. And John Conklin brings him down. Clock running at 4.15. Numa's just going to pound on them. They certainly do have the size advantage. They average over 200 pounds on both their offense and defensive line. And Bloomington is in the 180-pound range, so there's a decisive advantage for Newman running the ball. Third and three is the option. And the quarterback runs it well, gets the first down yardage. He just slips or goes down across the 35. Chad Toma brings him down. Chad Toma, whose brother Kurt, quarterback, the 1987 state champion for Bloomington. You can see the ride right there, and he's getting out, and there's a lot of room on that perimeter. Nice job of downfield blocking by the wide receiver, and he picks up that first down. That's what they need to do if they're going to be able to to get that inside running game, they're going to have to attack the perimeter once in a while so those linebackers loosen up a little bit. Jason Graham, perhaps the fastest man on the uh, team at the quarterback position, runs a 4-5-40. There he goes this time to the left with the pitch to Molina. And Molina to the 41-yard line. Jim Conklin making the stop, and Sterling Newman has started to establish its ground game now later in the first quarter. Well, in the first series, Mike, you know, they stayed right inside the tackles, kind of feeling everybody out. And you can see right here, the ride of the fullback, and he does a nice job right here of pitching the ball. He's got his lead blocker out in front of him. Turns up field and picks up the first down. But they established in the beginning by running inside, kind of get a feel for what those linebackers are going to do. Now they're going outside in this series. And all of a sudden now, I think, as we're moving the ball, you'll see a combination of both, inside and outside. Second down. Ball at five. Second man throw Molina again, and Molina... Getting a yard or two, Ryan Penn coming up from a strong safety spot to make the stop, Penn number 15. And a third down and three will result with the ball at the Newman just across the 41. You know, these backs are, are big, strong backs. And of course, with that fullback, Crick, John Crick, 6'2", 228 pounds. Last year, he was a guard. He was a guard this season for the first five. He's only played five games at running back, and boy, he certainly has anchored. There he is. He's up in the wishbone. Left, left, left side. Left side. Third down play. Flags fly. Graham trying to place the ball across. He's a little bit short, but we have a penalty here. Greg Connor, right linebacker, making the stop. See what the flag is. Ball was short of the first down. Let's go to Joe as they uh, sort this one out. 
All right, thanks again, Mike and Jack. And Jack, you don't know as a coach, maybe the most, the biggest strategy decision a coach can make is at the beginning of a game, like a windy morning like this one, and that's the coin flip, where to take the field right away. And that's one of the reasons why Bloomington Central Catholic chose to take this position here, and that's why the ball has been on this side of the field all morning long. Repeat third down. Well, you know, you're, that's exactly right. And the other thing is that had Newman won the toss, a lot of times people will defer to the second half with uh, conditions like this, but Newman being more of a running team would have taken the ball because they know they don't have to worry about the throw. So they would have just kept that with their running game. But that's a very good observation because that is a fact. Five yard penalty negates the down. So we go back to third down, nine yards to go. And now they go into the passing offense. Graham looking. And Jason Graham with some running room, but he's still a couple of yards short. John Conklin making the stop along with Greg Connor. Graham had a designed pass play, but he always has the option to go. Couldn't find the receiver, and he went. Let's take a look here at uh, number 50, Jim Conklin, 220-pound linebacker, a junior, and that's what we call the pancake block. And that certainly was done, and that's by that ex-guard that we talked about, John Crick, who is now at fullback. And now he will punt. And this time he gets a little more into the wind, taken on the 35-yard line. And up and out of bounds. Again, good field position for Newman. And that will be uh, Brian Kiley on the run back. And once again, Bloomington Central will be in business with decent field position close to midfield at the 45. Well, oftentimes when you have uh, games that are played with these kind of wind conditions, that person that establishes field position in that first series, that's a carryover through the entire half. That other person can never get out of that negative uh, field area. Bloomington stopped in the second series after a good march on its first, but that good march has given them a good field position here when it has the ball again. And this time it is Brian Kiley, and Kiley is stopped by the front of that Comet defensive line, Brandon Ramirez, 5'7", 200 pounds, senior nose guard, putting all 5'7", and 200 to stop Brian Kiley. Take a look at the man right over the center there, number 31. Great camera angle. You can see he beat the center, found that gap, and made the play on the fullback. What awesome. they're trying to do is hope they can screen off that nose man. That's why they have that fullback so close that he can hit in there very quickly. Loss of one, second and 11. Ace back offense, three receivers to the right side. And they give it to the up man. It is Brian Kiley. And Brian Kiley again is stopped. And again by Mr. Ramirez as we come to the final 20 seconds here in the first quarter. And that'll bring up a uh, third and 10. He got the yard back. He lost on first down. Well, oftentimes teams will try and spread you out by formation to spread those linebackers out and soften up that middle and go with the run, which is a good call on most occasions. But in this particular play, Ramirez is playing an awful good good position there at nose guard. He's really handling from tackle to tackle. And before they can get a playoff, the first quarter comes to an end. That's the end of the first quarter. No score here at Bloomington Normal between Central Catholic High and Sterling Newman. Back with second quarter action in just a minute. A look at the crowd here. Obviously, that is the Comet crowd coming down from Sterling, Illinois, just off I-88, southwest of Rockford. And the Blue Machine is on the march right here. They're trying to stop. Catholic High on third down and long. Intercepted by Sterling Newman, Jose Quinones. Quinones, 160-pound junior defensive back right there, pass intended for Josh Sherman. But I'll tell you, Canonis could have been the intended receiver. He was right there. Well, he had there was three comments right in that area, and I was a little surprised that he you can see the three players right there, and he tries to drill it into the crowd. It's overthrown, and uh, Quinones is, is kneeling right there waiting for the football. Well, he had a tougher time fighting off his own man because Jason Graham, another one of the safeties, came by. Good concentration by Sterling Newman. Now Graham at the controls, first and 10 from the 37. And fighting for yardage, Big John Crick. Jim Conklin brings him down. 220 meets 220. Gain of three. Ball just short of the 40. See There's all the Conklin. 
excuse me, Mike. You see all the marks on the helmet there. Those are for different incentives and goals that they have for defense and offense. So many touchdowns or so many uh, shutouts or whatever. Those are just incentives that they give to the kids on the helmet. And after you run out of helmet, then you start with the knee pads, the right. shoulder pads. All right, second down. Good quick hitting opener for John Crick into the secondary. And he'll be about two yards short of the first. Once again, Jim Compton, the middle linebacker, comes in to make the stop. He'll bring up the third down. Well, it's kind of interesting here that John... The fullback is the low man on the totem pole as far as yard is concerned. Again, you mentioned earlier he hadn't played that much, but they have those two outstanding running backs, and uh, Bloomington is keen on those, so they're going to the big fullback inside. Third down, a little more than one, and this time it's Molina fighting for first down yardage, and he goes off the left side and gets it. Once again, the omnipresent Mr. Jim Conklin, along with Chad Toma, making the stop, but it will be a first and ten for the Comets. You see this base block and they lead with those two running backs right there and that's that's a good effort there because he came up about a, just a yard more than he needed so blowing that shoulder got that first down. Well, both teams are averaging about 24 points in the playoffs and both have been pretty good to start first quarters but uh, so far no score. Once again, this time it is Molina on the option. Uh, check it. It's the quarterback Jason Graham on the option after faking to John Crick and he gets across the 50. Mr. Conklin, along with Ryan Penn, making the stop. Now watch the way he cuts back here. You'll see Conklin's a slow read. He doesn't overrun the quarterback. You can see how easily he comes back in. Sometimes you'll get these young high school players that they'll try to beat him to the sidelines, and that's when that cutback's very effective. But right there, he just read a nice slow read and was able to make the play. Second and seven now from the 49-yard line of Bloomington. Oh, bad pitch. Trouble on the pitch to Molina. Free ball. And let's see who gets it. Preliminary indication or the preliminary indication is uh, that Newman still held on to it. And if they did, it was an excellent effort because that ball was loose with nothing but blue jerseys around. Looks like uh, Drigi, the left tackle, number 73, coming up with the fumble recovery. Okay, here's the option to fake right here to the fullback. You'll see a bad pitch right here. It's behind him. And when it bounces on the AstroTurf, it can go anywhere. You'll see all the Bloomington players there, but nobody goes to the, to the ground to get the football. Third and 11, back to throw. And the pitch complete to Molina. And Molina has got first down yardage. David Molina inside the 35. Greg Connor brings him down. Excellent pass by Jason Graham. That's a little flat pass to Molina, and Molina had lots of running room. They cleared out that uh, the, the cornerback Let's watch him. He's the lead back out of your picture right now, but he's just getting out in the flat right there. Good toss. The linebacker was inside, and uh, they had cleared out with the other back, and here he goes for a nice gain and a big first down. They don't show that much, but when they do, it's very effective. There's Molina, 180-pound senior. First and 10 from the 33-yard line of Wilmington Central Catholic Sterling Newman. Jason Graham for Newman High School gets a yard or two. John Conklin, the cousin of Jim, defensive right end, number 29, makes the stop there. Gain of one, call it second down nine. This is all predetermined options with the fullback at the college level. They'll read that ride to the fullback, but at the high school level, you just don't have enough time to do that. So the inside part of that is predetermined in most cases. And the way he's faking, it's obvious that it is predetermined. Second down. Once again, this goes to Jay Crick, number 42. Ryan Penn stops Jay Crick, gets him to about the 27. Let's go down to Joe Passion. Well, guys, we have already seen how the wind has been affecting the punters here early in this first game. And as that one pitch showed, if any ball gets in the air and it's not given a lot behind it, the wind's going to take it away. But it's back. And now let's take you back into the game, fellas. You can see that wind. Thanks, Joe. 25 miles an hour out of the west. Third and five from the 28. Sterling Newman with the drive here. Jay Crick and Jay Crick beaten back short of the first down. It appears Ryan Penn leading about three or four Saints along with Jim Conklin. And it uh, looks like they're about a yard short. And that'll bring up an interesting call for Mike Paposi. Well, you can see right here it's power football. Lead backs coming in here. Good effort right here to get close to that first down. Now, they're, they're in four-down territory here, so they've got fourth and one. 
and uh, I'm sure that they're going to be going for it and also doing some power football with that big fullback, 230 pounder. You saw Andy Miller, number 80, comes in. He is one of the split end messengers. He and number 84, David Sharp. So here we go, right out of the power wishbone on fourth and one. It is Jake Brick. May have been some movement in the defensive line. No flags go, but it uh, doesn't matter because Jay Crick has got the first down at the 22-23 yard line, as you saw Paposi. No guesses where they're going to be running. They're running behind their big right tackle, an all-stater, Jeff Ryan. He's 6'5", 241 pounds, and uh, there's nothing to guess about on that. You're going to run behind your best football player. And next to him, you've got a 240-pound guard. So, as you say, not much, not much choice right there. And once again, Graham on the option, keeps it himself across the 20. Tony Kiley coming up from his left linebacker spot to make the stop. Six minutes, 25 seconds to go. Gain of three, second and seven. Sterling Newman with its best drive of the game. Jason Graham gets the play in there from Miller. You know, it's interesting, Mike. Uh, Sterling Newman has scored 228 points in the first half of all the games total for the 13 ball games and have only given up 29. So they're really our first half ball club. On second down, they give Jay Crick and Jay Crick inside the 15. It'll be uh, about four yards short of the first. Ryan Penn coming up. Good block in there leading the way. Brian Profiter, 5'10", 215-pound senior left guard. Well, we're looking at a, a very dominating offensive line here. You can see second back through, and they're running right behind that big right side, a 241-pound tackle and 240-pound guard. And that's where they're going to get that five-yard average right there. Out Wayne Bloomington, about 20 pounds a man. They are using that advantage right now with a good ground game. But again, it's a third down play. And again, it's Jay Crick. And Jay Crick comes up a yard short. Good stop in there by Conklin. Jim Conklin and Rob Zanoni coming up from the uh, secondary to make the stop and make sure Crick does not get to that uh, marker. Conklin really did a nice job there. And he's only a junior, 221-pound junior middle linebacker and you can see the back of his helmet indicates how active he is at that spot well guess what fourth and one under five minutes to go first fourth down was converted let's see what happens here and let's see if they go to the right side Don Crick the fullback Jay Crick again they go right this one's going to be close Tony Kiley leading the way to make the stop they had to get uh, just inside the 12 and they're going to measure this one. Mike Poposi looking on. This is the kind of game he likes. Here's Jimmy Conklin, the middle linebacker. You see number 50 kind of looking like a Mike Singletary getting up there, trying to, trying to get rid of that lead blocker, number 34, Molina. And he comes up and makes a nice play. See him right here active, gets that left shoulder, keeps that inside shoulder free. Comes up and helps make the play. All right, here's the measurement. Jeff Reine helped out over there on the block, but they are short. Newman short, less than the length of the football, but, you know, a miss is as good as a mile, and you can hear the Bloomington crowd. They didn't have to travel far for this one, and they are here in force as well. So the ball goes over. An excellent defensive stop by that man's team, Coach Dan Boynton. And you know he's especially proud of that because his background is defense. It's interesting to watch those those hand signals, arm signals. Uh, that last year should look like he was pulling the pin out of a grenade, so we'll see if this is an option play or what. Tossing it or it sure is. Oh! Reball. Kylie falls on it near his own goal line. And it looks just short of a safety. I think the ball's on about the one. Josh Kelly coming up to make the stop. But boy, that is a risky play in this wind and Bloomington Central was caught. Quick pitch, a little high. You always try and pitch the ball on the numbers. Makes a nice play here to get possession back for Bloomington. But uh, they're in some trouble right now. Loss of 11. They're on the two. Second down and 21. Dangerous territory here for Bloomington. And look at this. Pass across. It is complete. That's to Darryl Mitchell. What a phenomenal call. Rob Zanoni, hey, that's coolness under fire. John Crick on the stop. Well, you know, you see it every Sunday. The pros do it in college. 
Just a quick uh, play action fake. He's just running right in the seam right there. That was a good throw, but it was more of an excellent catch by Daryl Mitchell, a junior. Daryl Mitchell caught 31 passes so far this season. Big one, number 32. They're still about eight yards short of the first down, but they are with a lot more breathing room here. Great drop back. We've got problems here. Zanoni. Ooh. Incomplete intended for Kylie, for Brian Kylie. Brandon Ramirez on the coverage, but a lot of pressure, especially from number 77, Jeff Reine, almost grabbing the quarterback for a safety. Well, some of that pressure was planned because that was supposed to be a screen. And uh, so obviously they kind of what we call chip block him and let him come, just hit him and let's take a look here. You can see he drops back, but he keeps on going. It's gonna be a screen to the left and uh, he gets an awful lot of pressure there. All right, Todd Curtis is gonna have to punt near his own end zone. Could be problems here, strong rush, poor kick, but a good roll again. It goes out across the 40 and Todd Kurz did his job. He got the uh, high snap and kicked it away. Didn't get it high, which is probably better in this case. He got a bounce and we'll be back. 3.03 to go, still scoreless. Scoreless here midway in the second quarter and you can see the uh, Sterling Newman fans are well protected. I can tell you the broadcast rights to this morning's state football championship been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction rebroadcast of this event without the written consent of Sports Channel and the IHSA is prohibited. Sterling Newman now inside Bloomington territory with John Crick moving across the 40. Jim Conklin making the stop. Clock under three minutes now. Bloomington Central coming out with a good first drive. Haven't heard from him since. Sterling Newman, meanwhile, goes three and out. And since then, they have been moving, moving on the ground primarily and uh, grinding it out here, which is their game plan. It really is. But, you know, both these teams get here. They have excellent offenses. But the key to getting the championship game is playing good defense. And they both play pretty good defense. And the pitch to Jay Crick. And Jay Crick swarmed under but gets away. Second effort by Jay Crick down near the 30-yard line and maybe the first down territory. He was caught for a loss. Finally brought down by Penn and Chad Toma. That was a great effort. Caught behind the line of scrimmage and ends up making a first down out of second and third efforts. That's just outstanding. Let's just watch right here. It's a quick pitch. Good penetration by the defensive end here, but very poor tackling. You can see right here, just not a good job of tackling, but just watch the effort here by this young man. People bouncing around now. He's still three yards away from that first down. Look at that effort. That is super. That's why they're in the championship game because of efforts like that all through the season. Nine Saints had shots at him. First down now. On the option again. Problems with the pitch. And Molina hangs on. Conklin there. Check it. It's Jay Crick, number 42. And once again, problems on the exchange on the pitch out. Well, you know, he didn't have to throw the ball that far, but he did pitch that ball into the wind and pitched it underneath the waist. Coaching point, we always try and tell him to pitch the ball to the numbers. That gives that back a better opportunity to handle the ball. We never want to pitch below the waist because when he's running, his knees are liable to pick the ball. So keep the ball above the waist, between the chin and the waist. Got a clock stoppage here. Loss of two could have been a lot worse for Newman. Brings up a second down and 12 at the 32-yard line of Bloomington Central. Both these teams have been close to disaster at different times when Bloomington with that bad pitch down on the two-yard line, but they have managed to uh, dig, them, dig, them, dig themselves out of the hole. Single back now. John Craig. Trying to throw lots of pursuit. And this time, Jason Graham ridden out of bounds. Tough angle going to the left, trying to throw the ball, going to your left. And he was not able to get those shoulders turned around. You can see him sprinting right here, but the defensive ends get good angles on him. He doesn't get a chance except right there to turn his shoulders, but he never gets a chance to settle his feet in. There's Jim a good Conklin. shot right there. Jim Conklin knocking him out of bounds. Third down, 10. Ball on the 30. And again, they go with the one back set. Three receivers to the right. The one back, Crick goes in motion. Again to the left. Again, Graham. This time, oh, Shirts it is complete, but to the wrong uniform. Rob Zanoni on the interception. And the defense continues to excel. Zanoni, the free safety, now will turn around, play cornerback. The pass intended for Jay Crick. 
And with a minute 22 to go, Mike Caposi looks on as his team just wasted a good opportunity. You'll see him getting the shoulders around. He's got a back coming across the field, but he just overthrows the football and right into the arms of Rob Zanoni. And now Bloomington's got an opportunity to drive the ball down the field. Well, they have about a minute 10 to go. And let's see what Bloomington decides to do here. If they're going to go for it, or just sort of, yeah, you know, they're just going to go right here. The Huffman takes it. And Huffman to the 20. Short gain brought down by Andy Miller, a cornerback. And we're going to get a timeout here taken by Bloomington. Those are awful good stats for a high school receiver, and especially when he's only a junior. Nice having him coming back next year. Well, they've only got five seniors playing on both ends here. A lot of two-way players, of course, that you see, especially in the 1A, the smaller schools. Eight two-way players for Sterling Newman. You know, several years ago, the state went to an interesting program. Some of the smaller communities, rather than have to drop their programs because of numbers, they have gone to what they call co-ops. So if two communities together can merge to bring their two high schools together if they're under a certain enrollment to have a football program. And I think that is just a super job by the state to keep football going in the state of Illinois for some of these smaller schools that might have enrollment problems. Now you can see Zanoni's numbers, five for eight, 38 yards, and uh, the one interception. Each team has thrown one. 54 seconds to go. We are in a tight, scoreless game. The 1A championship. Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney, Joe Passion down on the field. And let's see what uh, Bloomington Central can do. They're in the eye on second and seven. Mitchell in motion again. And Zanoni is caught back and sacked with 45 seconds to go. Brandon Ramirez very active at the nose guard spot. Dan Boynton now. Let's see who's going to take this time out. You bet. Sterling Newman with a third down. They're going to use a timeout or two, try to get the ball back. Let's watch the nose man right there. You can see the center steps, but he gets no help at all from the guards, and Ramirez is creating quite a problem for Bloomington inside because the center at this point is not able to handle him. He's just outquicking him. Ramirez, very compact, 5'7", 200 pounds, and he's going against Jeff Flynn, and Flynn is about 45 pounds uh, lighter at 5'10", 155. Well, there you see the uh, road to the playoffs, the road right here for Bloomington. They hadn't uh, uh, had a tough time in the first game with the last, but a couple of squeakers in the middle with Arcola and El Paso. So here they are, 12-1 and one against 11-2 and two Sterling Newman. Now third down play right here with the ball on the 15-yard line for Bloomington Central. Blitz is on. And incomplete intended for Brian Kiley. And number 11, Jamie McKinley coming in had dead aim on Rob Zanoni, and Zanoni lucky to get that ball off. Well, it was a screen play, but you don't want it to have to happen that fast. You want him to set up and then drop again. And as you can see right here, he gets an awful lot of pressure from the backside and never gets an opportunity to set up, and he just overthrows the football right here. The screen was there, and we had a better throw. Well, Graham is back in single safety, but you know they're going to rush a lot of folks here, and a good job Flags. to get the ball off. Flags it down. Looks like it's going to be a roughing penalty. And the kick by Kurz. He's not all state for nothing. Excellent job to clear it to the 40, but we've got a flag down, and it's going to be roughing against Sterling Newman. Looks like John Crick may have been in there, and you know they were sending uh, 10 men to block deep in Bloomington territory, but that time it backfired. Look at that. Can you imagine having that come at you? You can see right there that shoulder pad catches that, that foot and twists them around, and that's where your flag comes in. And normally the, the uh, players are coached that you go towards where the kicker is going to be kicking from, not at him. Just a bad angle there to be able to get the foot of that kicker. Jose Quinones uh, coming in and trying to block the kick just slid into his leg and as any good kicker knows you feel contact or even grieve contact you're down so this will be a 15 yarder and 29 seconds left in the first half right first down now Bloomington Central with new life here see what they could do in the final half minute this has been a good one 
been a lot of defense so far. Two excellent football teams really anchored by their defenses to this point. Most of the action in the south end of the field. Zanoni looking long. Well, open. Huffman is there. Just overthrown. Defense by Quinones. And Huffman had his man beat. Beaten. Just a little hitch and go. He came up on a three-step drop. And you can see Huffman here. Now watch. He'll stop. He'll bring up the defensive back and run right by him. And the ball is just overthrown. He was gone. There was nobody there. Quinones is now exhaling. You know, and the point of it from a coaching standpoint, you always tell that defensive back, look at the clock. We'll give him that three yards right now. Don't get beat on something going deep. And, of course, he bit on that little hitch pattern. Second down, 21 seconds to go. Again, Zanoni looking right. Again for Huffman. This time he's got him. Huffman trying to get out of bounds and does so. Good effort to the 46-yard line of Bloomington Central. Again, Quinones making the stop. And Jeff Huffman is showing some excellent hands. Well, this catch right here, watch, three-step. But watch how he catches it in his hands right here, just like stick him, which is illegal. But that was an excellent catch. He's only a junior, and he's showing some great skills. Quick out. Watch him reach up here and show excellent hands. You know, that's, that's the key to a receiver. A lot of times they want to catch it in the body, but uh, right there he's using the hands that he should be doing. 14-6 left, first and 10, 46-yard line. Again, Zanoni looking to the sideline, and it is incomplete, intended for Darrell Mitchell, who just took a couple of steps and broke to the right. Jake Crick, the monster back, as they call him in the uh, Comets defense, on the coverage there. Dan Boynton now has 12 seconds with a second and 10. Dan Boynton in his third year took over from John McIntyre who led this team to a couple of state championships. John one of which over recovered. To, recovered that and interviewed him after that game and uh, he went over to uh, normal high school. Second down now. Green again. And this time Brian Kiley. Timing a little off on that play as well, but once again, uh, Jeff Riney putting a lot of pressure along with Jamie McKinley, the right side of that Newman defensive line, giving it to Zanoni, and that's not the first time. So now eight seconds to go with third down and ten. Let's see, he's playing something about dealing, dealing cards. So let's see what this is. They go to the one back, the ace back offense. You know. They're going to be center field. They spit out the draw to the one back, Brian Kiley. And Kiley running, 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 and that will do it as he crosses midfield. Jason Graham making the stop. But that's the end of the first half. A defensive struggle between two fine 1A teams. Scoreless as they go to the locker room. And I tell you, this has been a real tussle. Well, you know, we did expect more offense, but again, getting to this championship game, you have to play great defense, and both of these teams are playing excellent defense. The win does have a factor for both teams, but especially for Bloomington, because they throw the ball quite a bit more than Newman. But the uh, but the key to both of these teams really has been the defense, and certainly in this ball game, they're both playing excellent defense. Well, Bloomington Central started out the way they wanted to play. They came out throwing the ball, and they had a good drive. Then they were stopped and really have not mounted much of an offense since it's been all Sterling. Let's go down to Joe Passion. Well, we can obviously see how windy it is, see how you've had to deal with it a little bit, but you pass the ball in there to kind of mix things up. Will you do more of that in the second half, Mike? Yeah, we'll probably have to throw a little. Uh, you know, we're just a little flat for some reason, so uh, we're not getting off the ball as good as we usually do, and I don't think our backs are running very hard right now, so... We'll have to do a few and out at halftime, and uh, yeah, if we get the wind a little more, we'll, we'll probably throw it up a little more, too. Because the wind swirls down here on field level, sometimes, even going against the wind, if you throw it to the sideline, you're actually throwing with the wind. Well, you saw what happened when they tried to throw their uh, screen passes. It's like a knuckleball. The wind just knocks it straight down, so no, it's not the best conditions in the world, of course, but they like to throw, and we like to run, so it should be to our advantage, but uh, our kids aren't doing it right now, so you know, we're going to have to get them going somehow. One last thing, uh, how important is it for your running game to keep going to actually keep their offense off the field? Well, that was our game plan coming in. That's been our game plan all year long. We, 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 we want to keep on offense by long drives, 
That way they can't score the ball. Have a great second half, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you up in the booth down here from the windy sidelines of Hancock Stadium. Yeah, Joe, we see it and we hear it. Comments from Mike Faposa. You know a lot of Sterling Newman kids are going to get chewed at half, and we'll see what happens. We'll be back with halftime activities in just a minute. Well, zeroes all around after the first 24 minutes, and not because it hasn't been a hard-fought game. Bloomington Central Catholic, Sterling Newman Central Catholic, no score. The Comets and the Saints. Jack, again, the game has been all play, been played all in the south end. The wind is having a tremendous effect on it, and you would have to think that since Sterling Newman is a much better running team and a much bigger team, they're going to come out and have that advantage in the second half. Well, you heard the comments that the coach made going into the locker room. Uh, He's going to be doing some motivational speaking in that locker room to get those backs and those linemen to come off the ball. I thought in the last series that they started coming around because they were moving the football down there, especially when they were running to the right behind uh, Jeff Riney and, uh, you know, the rest of that big right side of the offensive line. But the thing to keep in mind is that this wind is only going to get, get worse. And right now, you know, we're gusting to about 30, 35 miles an hour. The Bloomingtons, really, their offense is based more on the pass because they've thrown for 20 touchdown passes. They're a little more balanced, but in this sense, the second half, I think Newman's definitely going to have the advantage because they want to run the football. Newman ran the football well, especially in the second quarter. They had two fourth downs to convert. They converted one. Then deep inside the 20, they just missed on fourth down uh, by the length of the football. That was really the only scoring threat for either team in the first half. Well, interestingly enough, when Newman ran the ball and stayed basically away from the option, they were more successful. When they tried to go outside and run the option where they pitched the ball and attacked the perimeter, that's when they had turnovers or they had miscues, a bad pitch where they ended up losing a yard or two. But when they ran the ball inside the tackles, they really moved the ball down the field and were very effective. I think second half, you're going to see them staying inside the ends, especially running off tackle and going fewer times to the outside with that option. Very basic, very effective for the team that is very large. Okay, we'll have more at halftime here. Joe Passion's got an interview with Don Robinson, the IHSA. Some interesting things to say when we come back. Here at halftime, still no score. The Class 1A championship game between the Comets and the Saints. Don Robinson, the longtime assistant executive secretary who was honored prior to today's game. I think that was just kind of a formal thank you for the 13 years you've been running this football tournament. Well, it was, Joe. It was a total surprise to me from the National Federation office, and I'm very honored to be uh, uh, presented with uh, that, that kind of recognition. I, I, I'm very honored. And you, of course, have seen all the problems come and go over the years. One of them that seems to come up every year, Don, is the input from member schools and how to better the tournament, particularly when it comes to private and public schools. Some proposals are coming up again for votes soon. Tell us about those. Yeah, you're right, Joe. It's, it's an ongoing issue. It has been since I've been here and was here before I got here. Uh, uh, quite frankly, I don't think anyone has the, the, the perfect answer right now, but the proposal that's before the, uh, the voting uh, membership of the association right now is uh, a proposal to put all of the non-public schools into uh, a, a class higher, one class higher in football, and also move all the non-public schools to double A in other activities where classification is a factor. And uh, you know, right now, uh, again, it's being voted on, and I, and I don't care to predict on, on what I think is going to happen with that, but there's some, some very unfair things of, about the proposal, I think, and, and hopefully uh, what the proposal has done, if nothing else, has caused us to look very closely at, at what that problem is and, and try to come to some conclusions so that uh, those people who believe that there is an unfairness uh, can be satisfied. All right, before we get going, we may have to just spread ourselves out here with these big wins and actually get in our three-point stance for the rest of this interview. Uh, Don, one of the things that, that I'm always interested to hear from public and private school coaches, although they bark and they moan about the unfairness and fairness of it all, it seems like everyone unanimously seems to agree that we still want to know who the best in our class is. We don't want it separated. Well, and, and I totally agree with that attitude. Uh, uh, 
the Illinois Football Coaches Association, who are not voting members, by the way, are on record as not wanting to change the playoffs. But I think within the structure of the playoffs, uh, the, the major complaint is that the non-public schools have no boundaries. And, and I think on that basis, uh, there is a legitimate complaint. Uh, when and if we, we uh, put boundaries on the non-public schools, uh, you know, I'm not sure that'll solve the problem either because those boundaries are going to have to include an area that's far greater than the non-public schools have right now, So, I, than the public schools have. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure that, that that is the total answer. We've looked at that some 10 years ago and, and uh, came to the conclusion at that time that that was not a practicality and, and changed the transfer rule at that time. But it is, it is festering again right now. And, and uh, again, I think we need to look at it and, and do what we can uh, this time and, and maybe uh, down the road some more changes need to be made. One of the other great debates that is always heard around the greasy spoon places at state championship games is should the big schools play in Chicagoland and should the small schools play in Central Illinois? Why is that not possible? Well, we did that uh, in the early 80s. Uh, we moved the 5A, 6A championships up to Northwestern, and, and they did a great job, and it works very well when we have four schools in the larger suburban area that are involved. But uh, the second year we were up there, we had uh, uh, Bartonville Limestone, uh, came up and played in one of the games, and East St. Louis played in the other ball game. And uh, when we have two downstate teams that are involved in it, uh, our expenses are far greater up there than they are here are at Illinois State University. And, and on that basis, we're, we're far better off being here. So uh, we'd like to take it where the people are, but you, you don't know where the teams are coming from. And on that basis, you really can't make that prediction. I'll tell you what, right now, as usual, a great tournament. We've got some great sunny weather. It's making us nice. Don, great to have you here again. Thanks, Joe. It's nice to have Sports Channel here, too. And we will be back with the second half of the 1A class championship football game between the Comets and the Saints right after this Sports Channel timeout. Getting ready for second half action here at uh, Hancock Stadium on the campus of Illinois State University. Some of the highlights here uh, most of the action we told you was the south end of the field, and here the first play of the second quarter with Bloomington on the march. Zanoni threw one to the wrong suit. Yeah, he just threw that right into coverage and came up with a big interception here. Here's another play now, just a, a pass out on the flat to the back, picking up a big first down. They had third and 12 here in a good effort to pick up that first down. For Molina, meanwhile, a 14-play drive, and one of the big plays here... Boy, look at the effort by Jay Crick. There he's hit here one time, spun around, two, three. Combination of good running and poor tackling, four, five, six, seven. And he picks up a first down. Eight, nine players make contact with him after he initially is hit, and he picks up that big first down. Great well, Rob Zanoni, who was intercepted earlier, takes matters into his own hands by intercepting his opposite number right here with Sterling Newman on the march. Well, you can see the ball the ball is floating right here. He just did not have good control going to his left, never got his shoulders around, and another turnover there for Newman. I can't imagine uh, passing long in this wind, especially uh, on the part of Sterling Newman. I would think that Newman, as you said, and as the coach said, is going to be running, running, running. Taking a look at the halftime statistics, again, uh, not much offense, certainly a lot of problems with passing. Well, you know, the funny thing there is you look at Newman's rushing yardage. Oftentimes, they do that in one drive, 71 yards. And that's their first half stat. So the defenses have really been a big factor in this first half. Now, you take a look at the time of possession, uh, which a lot of times means nothing. Here might be indicative because that's exactly the kind of game Newman wants to play. Very basic, grind them out, and look at it. They've got nearly 15 minutes on the clock to uh, less than 10 well, in our initial statements as we opened, Mike, we talked about how Newman's key has been that they control the football. They don't give it back to you. They score a lot of points. They eat up the clock. And as the coach went in at halftime, you heard him talk about their game plan is to control that football, eat up a lot of yardage, eat up a lot of clock. They're doing the clock, but not a lot of yardage. And they've also had problems because they committed a, uh, a serious penalty, roughing the kicker deep in Bloomington's end and coming up short on fourth and one. So Sterling Newman has had the opportunity. We'll see if they can convert. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a minute. Before the second half kickoff, let's go down to Joe Passion on the field. He's got Bloomington coach Dan Boynton with him. Joe, go ahead. 
All right, thanks very much, fellas. Down here with me, Dan Boynton, the head football coach for the Saints. And what kind of adjustments were weighted, made at halftime, Dan? Uh, defensively, we really haven't needed to make any adjustments. We're playing pretty good. We just need to use better form tackling. Uh, offensively, we need to be able to establish some type of rushing offense, which we haven't done yet. Now, passing with the swirling wind down here, what does that tell you you'll be able to do more of here in the second half? Well, we need to continue to try to throw the ball underneath their coverage. Their corners are laying off of us. Uh, we got some good talent out there. We're just going to try to throw two, three-yard uh, passes to them and let their talent uh, dictate the action. Any injuries in the first half to report? No, sir. We're, uh, we're completely healthy, and uh, we'll see how we do this half. All right, Dan. Best of luck out there Thank in the you. second half. Thank you very much. And, fellas, back up to you in the booth. Okay, Joe, it should be a very interesting tactical second half right here, Jack. Uh, Bloomington, uh, let's see. They're, we're just getting a coin toss now here in the second half because it was deferred in the first half. I believe Sterling is going to receive. They uh, they deferred uh, the, the initial coin toss, which they won, and that's a rule that came in several years ago that you could defer to the second half to make your choice. And uh, they're going to take the football because obviously... He has a lot of faith in his motivational speaking, which he did at halftime to his players. So uh, Newman could be coming out here very motivated with this first drive. Well, the sophomore Todd Kurz will kick it off for Bloomington Central. Again, that win. As you look at the field, it's going right across from the near side to the far side at in excess of maybe 30 miles an hour. Newman High School in Sterling, Illinois. Here's how they got to the final with convincing wins all the way through. Franklin Grove, Stockton, Durand, and Anawan. Anawan, boy, they, they've had some problems there with some penalties and whatever, and that has continued to plague uh, the Comets here so far, but they've averaged nearly 40 points a game for the playoffs. Well, you know, in the playoffs, they came up with uh, running John Crick a little more when they put him at fullback, and that increased the total there. They'd averaged 26 points a game in the regular season, but then they jumped to 39.8 for the playoffs and a lot of that had to do with Crick with that inside game. Uh, you can see the wind is a problem on the kickoff and the Todd Kurz will kick it to Jason Graham and to Nonis together in double safety. So we're just about ready. Kurz gets it away. It's Canonis at the 15. Oh, a lot of room. Canonis. Huffman, and Huffman saved the touchdown. Well, he must have made a very good emotional speech there at halftime, so uh, we were right on with that call. Jeff Huffman taking the ball on his own 15. Check it, Kinonis taking the ball on his own 15. And let's see it again. Right from the end zone, you can see the wall setting up here, wedge blocking. They're knocking people off left and right. Nice job of running right here. This is a good effort of tripping him up, or he's going all the way. Jeff Huffman coming up with that game-saving tackle. We used to say he got him by the shoelace. I think he got him by the Velcro right now. Ooh. First down, the ball's loose, and the backfield's still loose. Who's got it? It's windy, it's slippery, and it looks like the Saints have recovered. Yes, they have. Boy, we're getting some action here. The first two plays, big plays early. Well, once again, the turnover bugaboo has hit Sterling Newman. John Conklin, number 29, making the recovery. Second back through. This play was, they did the exact thing in the first quarter when they tried to give the ball to the second back through. They fumbled again. So uh, they might be throwing that ball out of the, or that play out of the playbook. This may be the furthest north we've been all game. Inside handoff, and again it's loose, and this time Sterling Newman is recovered. Bang, bang, bang. John Crick in there along with Jamie McKinley, I believe, with the uh, handoff to the flanker back Mitchell. Ball came loose, never really had it. And John Crick, who does a lot for this team offensively and defensively, puts him back on offense again. It's a wing back counter here. The wing back's coming back, but he never gets the handoff. The ball's on the ground, and uh, Newman's got it back. Good field position on the 48. And the wishbone, first and 10 for the Comets. Second man through, and he is met by Darrell Mitchell. And Mitchell says hello to Jay Crick and knocks him back four yards to the 45. That's one of the plays that they had worked on in the second quarter in that drive where they were moving the ball down the field to get Crick. And that, that initial fake to Crick holds that linebacker, especially Jim Cochran, in there. And then they give the second back coming through. 
Looks like we've got our first injury of the ball game here, and it's and a big one. That's Jim Conklin is limping off there with a little tenderness in that right leg, the right knee, and you certainly don't want to see that. Boy, that'll really hurt the defense of Bloomington. He's an excellent player and is the hub of that defense for the Saints. Uh, they are attending to Conklin. And Josh Sherman, number 89, will take Conklin's spot. And let's see if Newman can exploit it. Oh, and the pitch in Molina. And Molina with Hoffman stopping him gets outside, gets the extra effort, and they have first down yardage right there. David Molina with an excellent run. He's real close to it again. Mixing up the fake right in here, coming down the line in the option, and he pitches it. And he's got good room on the perimeter. Uh, Could have got a little better block from that wide receiver, but they're, you know, they're more into uh, wearing the towels and all those kind of things, and they are blocking people. So Jeff Huffman, who saved the touchdown moments before, saved the bigger game just there. Second back through, down again. Four first down yardage and more. Jay Quick and Huffman making the stop. And the ball at the 36-yard line of Bloomington Central. Going here to the right side again, you can see that big offensive line creating the big holes. What they're trying to do is isolate on that new linebacker that came in, and they did it right there and picked up a first down. Again, it's a first down, and Molina this time gets nothing, trying the center where Tony Kiley is now the middle linebacker. Josh Sherman, outside linebacker. Comes in and he makes the stop. Clock at 9 minutes 40 seconds. Here in the third period, no score. And there's David Molina with 24 yards today so far. Both these teams playing excellent defense. Gain of one, second and nine. Ball right on the 35-yard line. The three backs, the backs, the two Cricks and Molina. And again, we'll get a... Officials came out here for a uh, couldn't get his uh, chin strap on. Trying to find room between all those decals. John Crick has the problem solved, and here Graham on the option. Jason Graham turning the corner, and Graham inside the 25-yard line. First down. Ryan Penn, great Connor riding him out of bounds, and Jason Graham using that 4-5 speed. Another first down, and they're getting closer to that Saints goal line. It looks like they're getting into the rhythm here. Now, Graham, you can see on the option, rather than cutting back, he takes a nice angle here and outruns those linebackers. And he averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry, and he scored 14 touchdowns running the football. So he knows what to do with it when he's got it on the perimeter. But Jim Conklin still out of the game. Clock at 9.09. First and 10 on the 22. First man through is big John Crick, and Crick gets to the 20. Stopped by Tim McDonald and Kenny Rhodes, the inside lineman there. And John Crick, even though he only gets a couple of yards, is making him pay. And there is Jim Conklin. See how effective he'll be. Looks like he might have just had a cramp there. You see how excited he is to be back in that football game. He's a gutsy football player and does a super job in the middle there. Game of two, second and eight from the 20. Jay Crick, two more down to the 18. Sherman, number 89, making the stop. See right here, they fake to the fullback, give to the second man through, going to the right again. But Bloomington with excellent pursuit. They're not as big as Newman, but they get to the football rather quickly. And so consequently, they've been getting two and three people on those ball carries. And of course, when you have big backs like Newman has, you need that many people to bring them down. You see the graphic on the third down conversions. They've got third and six here inside the 20. And the pitch to Jay Crick. And hello, look out. He has met fine play by John Conklin. Conklin, a loss back near the 25-yard line. Let's watch him. He's screaming in from the right side, right there, number 29, 6'1", 170 pound junior. Well, Brian Benitez is the field goal kicker. He hasn't kicked one this year. And if you're in fourth down country, he's also got the wrong angle here because he's on the left. If he's on a right hash mark, you'd have the wind a little bit with him, but this way he'd be kicking right into it. It's moot. They're going to go for it on fourth and 11. 
And Jason Graham gets up to the 20, but we've got flags down as the gain is well short of the first down. Let's see what the penalties are. Dan Boynton, obviously, more than an interested spectator. Probably holding. Preliminary signal is uh, that it's against the comments of Newman High School. The legal procedure. You can see here they did a nice job of covering those receivers, so Graham tucks it away and ducks up inside and would not have picked up the first down as it was. There's Mike Stavers. Formation, light, decline, first down. Okay, so the illegal formation declined by Bloomington Central Catholic. Dan Boynton can flex his legs, and uh, Bloomington and Rob Zanoni go back to work. 7.09 to go in this scoreless game. There's the other side of Mike Faposi. Split backs now. Ryan Kiley, Jason Messamore behind Zanoni from his own 20. Intended for the uh, wide receiver, Darrell Mitchell, thrown behind him. Quinones again on the coverage. And Zanoni, who's had a lot of practice on this field, which is the home field, still has got to be somewhat intimidated, it appears, by this difficult wind condition. Well, as Coach Boynton had talked about, they were going to go to that particular pass, that quick three-step drop, and let the backs run with the ball after they get it. But he underthrew the receiver there on that particular play. He's a 55% pass normally having a rough day today, as anyone would expect in this win. 6.54 to go, second and 10. Once again, Mitchell in motion. Zanoni again. And Zanoni finds Mitchell this time. And Mitchell to the 25, still third down and about six. Brian Burr is coming up, number 61, the linebacker for Mitchell. Pretty good. reception. See Mitchell coming in motion right here, and he's just going out to the flat because Hoffman cleared. And you can see how that ball is knuckling out there. And he was throwing right into the teeth of that particular win, and he didn't have much on it. Mitchell to the near side, Huffman to the far side on third down and six. Sinoni looking for Huffman. He's got him. There's first down. down and more. Huffman's got one man to beat. And Jason Graham, the quarterback on offense, the defensive back gets him, but the biggest play of the ball game right there for the Saints of Bloomington Central to the 44-yard line of Sterling Newman. You saw the difference in the velocity of the throw. On this throw, he had the win. It's a crosswind behind him, and you can see how well he throws the football there. On the play previously, he was thrown into that crosswind. You can also see, too, how well he knows this field because that's a heavy crown, a real deep crown. He had to throw around it as the field floats off in the middle. He had to throw above and below it and did it perfectly. First down the 45-yard line of Bloomington uh, Central on the Sterling Newman 45. Quick handoff. Not much there. Brian Kiley. For his second effort may get a couple of yards. Josh Kelly on the stop. Now Kylie uh, statistically is a pretty good back. He's carried the ball 117 times for 948 yards and eight touchdowns. But the best part of that, he's averaged eight yards per carry. So he's effective inside if given the opportunity. Well, Huffman comes out. Chad Toma, number 22, comes in. Game of four, second and six. Zanoni checking off here, which he does maybe 50% of the time for Dan Boynton. And they look and they find Chad Toma. And Toma, close to the 30-yard line, close, but better than the first down right now. John Crick bringing him down. Developing some consulate of confidence here in the passing game. You can see again, just a little quick out. The ball is thrown before he makes that cut. And uh, that safety and the linebacker come over to make the play. One, two, three. Throw the ball. You can see how it starts knuckling. Miller had a shot at him. John Crick coming over to put the finishing touches on him. But it's first and ten for Bloomington on the Sterling Newman 31. Sinoni again looking. And again, he's got his man. This time, once again, it's Mitchell. And Mitchell to the 25, 24-yard line. Good seven yard gain there on that short pass three step drop watch the steps one two three and he just rifles it out there nice catch and move right here watch him cut back nice seven yard gain 
Brian Burris the stop a look at Daryl Mitchell he's caught three today 31 for the season four minutes 11 seconds to go still no score looking over that front and audibleizing and the give us to Messamore and Messamore has been kind of quiet gets to the 25-yard line Brian Burrs again on the stop we've been calling his number a lot it'll bring down as they say a key third down Mike Paposi hoping his uh, Sterling Newman club can hold on right here this is the most sustained drive of the game for Bloomington Central well you know that term key is often overused but when you get to the state championship game it's almost every play is a key play at least in the eyes of the coaches Huffman to the left. You see the clock. Third down over the middle. It is complete. First down. It goes to Josh Sherman. The tight end. Jason Graham making the stop inside the 15. We get a late flag. Oh, that'll be a big penalty if it's against Newman. And it, from the looks of things, it probably will be because the man was down. And the flag was thrown after he was down. Josh Sherman shaking up right there being attended to. They're checking on him. Let's take a break and we'll be back as we uh, look this over. Well, you can see Josh Sherman being helped off the field. He is replaced by Greg Connor, but the penalty was against Bloomington Central for unsportsmanlike conduct. So uh, somebody must have said something down there in that pile. And it's a costly penalty because it takes them now to a first and 25 on the Sterling Newman 27 yard line. So you would not expect Saints to say anything unkind though, would you? Heaven forbid. Zanoni back to throw and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. And a good job in there by Jeff Reine. Jeff Reine, a Division I prospect for college ball as well as academics. Got up there, put his hands up and all 6-5 and 240 something and use that 30 on his ACT to figure out what to do too. There's Ronnie. There it is that big paw coming up inside and he waited till he saw the quarterback about to step into the ball when throwing and got that big right hand up in his face. Second down 25 yards to go and Zanoni setting his offense. We told you he can check off and does a great deal of it. Zanoni over the middle and again Brian Burrs. This time knocking it down. This was a big kick in the ribs for Bloomington Central. They had a first and 10 inside the 15. And that penalty really hurt them. Watch the play action fake there. He's going to the tight end right in there. And a nice job there by number 61, Brian Burr, 6'2", 205 pounder, getting that hand up because that could have been a big play right there if he had gotten it to him. Well, third down now, 25 yards to go. And Zanoni straight back, green legs go. Set up the screen, oh, and it's off. intercepted. Intercepted by Jamie McKinley. And McKinley with an excellent play is out to the 40-yard line of Sterling Newman. Let's see what the penalties are. It's going to be declined. Let's watch. You can see goes to the right. It's a screen going back to the left. Rainey right in his face. It's deflected by the receiver. Kylie. And there's your big interception. We're lucky they Bloomington didn't get a spear on that play right there. Well, the penalty was against Bloomington decline. And it'll be first down Sterling Newman. We still don't have a score, but I tell you, we've had lots of fireworks in this third quarter. 255 to go. While we have a moment, let's thank our spotters for uh, Bloomington Central, John Snyder. Jim Olson for Sterling Newman. We really appreciate the job they're doing today, and we still have a lot to go. Clock is running at 2.45. First and 10, Sterling Newman and Molina. Stopped by Tony Kiley. Jay Crick is the ball carrier. Let's go down to Joe. Mike, two quick points. One, on the injury to Josh Sherman. He says he's okay, got his ankle retaped. That right ankle's going to be all right. He will be able to put pressure. He will be back in the game. And there he back is. To you guys. Being worked on. Got the haircut for the championship right there. This is Molina, and Molina across the 45. He's stopped by Tony Kiley along with Ryan Penn, number 15. And we'll have a third down for the Comets of Sterling Newman. 
with about uh, oh, three yards to go for the first down. This is really a well-matched game here. Both these teams playing excellent defense, and their defense is taking each other out of their own offenses. So they're doing a good job. These defensive coaches really so far have done a great job. Third and three straight ahead with uh, Jason Graham close to the first. Kenny Rhodes and Tim McDonald, the two tackles, stop him. And let's check this one out because uh, it gets a nice spot there. And it will be first down for the Comets of Sterling Newman. Dan Boynton calling instructions to the Saints. Mike Paposi warming his hands. Clock now, final minute 30 here in the third quarter. Lewis puts out to the right, and again the handoff to Molina. And Molina, short yardage across midfield, gain of about three. David Molina, one of the many seniors on this team, 6'1", 180 pounds, led the team in rushing, but not by much, 1,071 yards to Jake Cricks, 1,056. Picks up three right there, second and seven, final minute of the third quarter. Ooh, and the ball again is loose. Wilmington says they have it, and they do. So I don't want it. You can have it. Tony Kiley recovers the fumble by Jason Graham. And with 47 ticks left on the third quarter clock, Bloomington Central will go north. Now this is a play right here where you got an inexperienced fullback. Watch him clamp down on the ball. Too much pressure, and it pops it out of there. There was supposed to be a light ride where Graham could pull it out and attack the perimeter, but not having played that position for most of the season, the timing wasn't there, and he got that elbow squeezed down on the football, and that's what caused the fumble. First down, the 49-yard line, their own 49, Bloomington Central. And the give. And the eye back now is Darrell Mitchell. Doesn't get much. Let's go down to Joe. Mike, you'll recall on that last drive by Bloomington, when they threw the ball successfully, they threw it to the far side of the field. That's where the wind is blowing to, and it's a little bit of a swirl. When they threw to this side of the field, the ball was intercepted. We'll see if they learn by their past mistakes. Back up to you guys. Good point, Joe, and the clock will tick down before another play can transpire. So that's the end of the third quarter. We still have no score. We have certainly not lacked for action. We'll bring you the fourth, and we think the final quarter, but at the rate we're going, we could be here a while. We could be in overtime. Sports Channel brings the debate and discussion from the sports pages to your living room when four sports writers talk about their opinions. Sports writers on TV. Debate begins Monday evening on Sports Channel. Our season never ends. This game is in the fourth quarter. No score. Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney. Joe Passion down on the field. The wind is whipping. The offenses are really trying to contend with it. Bloomington Central Catholic completes this one. It's out to Huffman. And Huffman brought down by Andy Miller, who has a, had a busy day in the secondary. And it'll bring up a third down and about five at the Newman High School 46-yard line. Now, the advantage is when you can see when he throws into that far sideline, as Joe mentioned, he's throwing with the win. And, of course, look at these stats. This is the, what we had mentioned. Newman likes to control that football time-wise. Bloomington's starting to catch up a little bit. But the win is a fact as far as throwing into it and throwing with it because it's going across the field. Third and five. Huffman splits to the left. Tononi looking to throw right. Intended for Brian Kiley. And again, the problem's coming to the near side. Defense by Josh Kelly. With the pressure. Watch now. He'll be throwing into the wind coming to this side. And you can see right off the bat, the pressure put on that ball is coming out there like a knuckleball. So, the, so there's a big factor depending on which direction you're throwing into the wind and with it. Jason Graham and Jay Crick back with Graham number 14 deeper. And this is Kurz. Always an interesting time punting today. And Kurz gets some foot into this one. Carries inside the 10 and into the end zone. Touchback. Good punt by Kurz. Sterling Newman will have it at their own 20. 11 minutes, 9 seconds to go. Fourth quarter. Still no score. There's an all-state punter right there. Made the several of the all-state teams as the punter. 
Been a fine job here. And of course, you can get your stats way up on AstroTurf when you get those bounces. And Kurz knows this field, that's for sure. That might have a lot to do with his average. It's kind of obvious. The wishbone. Sterling Newman gives it to Jay Crick. And Jay Crick for two yards. The defenses are unyielding. Ryan Penn, number 15. Greg Connor, number 83. Jim Conklin, number 50, who had been shaken up, is back in there. That middle linebacker. Well, here's a good look at good crowds here at Hancock Stadium in Bloomington Normal, campus of Illinois State University. And not just from the local folks, Bloomington uh, Central Catholic, of course, plays its games right here, but a lot of people came down from Sterling. Second and seven for Newman. Molina to the outside. Does he have enough speed? I don't think so. Knocked out of bounds by Rob Zanoni at midfield and what a run by David Molina who's been looking to break one all day there it was that was the longest run from scrimmage thus far and that was a counter coming back as you'll see they go in one direction here comes 34 right there big hole coming to backside and he just doesn't have that overall speed to outrun Zanina right there who makes a nice tackle but a big gain for Newman gives him excellent field position 27 yard run for David Molina. Ball is at midfield. First down here for Sterling Newman. There's a good look at Jason Graham, the quarterback. Very fast runner, can throw the option. Inside handoff, it goes to John Crick, and the big guard turned fullback stacked up at the line. Say hello to Tim McDonald and Daryl Mitchell. This Coughlin is really impressive. This Jim Coughlin right there, number 50. From tackle to tackle, he makes all the plays. He's really an active linebacker, and he's only a junior. And he's making the plays on the Sterling Newman Comets. By the way, if you want to go to Sterling from Chicago, you head west. And, of course, here we are right down here in Bloomington Normal. Back to the game. Second down, 10 to go. No gain on that last play. And this is the second man through. It's twin brother Jay Crick. And Jay Crick rips off good yardage over the right side. Once again, going behind that big right side of Riney and Highbarger. Tony Kiley, Rob Zanoni making the stop close to a first down. Now that's the same play, but in the other direction. Watch the fake left and come back right here with the counter lead. Halfback leaning, same play as they ran on the other side with Molina, but not for as big a game, but there was a big hole there. Nine minutes, 20 seconds to go, and we might add in regulation. Still scoreless here. Sterling Newman on the 43-yard line of Bloomington Central. Again, trouble with the handoff. And back for a loss to the 48 is Jason Graham, John Conklin making the stop. And once more, they had problems on that quarterback option. That was, again, supposed to be the same, similar to the two plays they'd run before. The counter leads are getting... They're trying to get Coughlin since he has been so active to the football. They really need to run the counters where they're going back away from the flow. And uh, they had been doing it effectively up until that snap right there. And they try the quick kick. Check it on fourth down. They kick it away. John Crick gets it going and a bounce comes back. Bounce comes back toward midfield. Not a good punt by John Crick. And uh, Bloomington Central will take over on the 40. Let's go down to Joe Passion. Well, Mike and Jack, we're seeing what the punting game, of course, has been doing to hurt both teams. The one thing you may want to look for next time, Newman has the football. And, Jack, you may be able to see this upstairs. Diagram how you they're trapping the ball. They're trying to bring the misdirection to maybe offset their lack of success with the straight option. Back up to you guys. Well, there's a penalty flag, Joe, on the field. And uh, let's see what this is all about. Well, as Joe mentioned, they have been running those counters the last few plays because all through the first half, they've been going uh, in the, in the we same have direction. We illegal batting on the white. It's declined. First down at the first touching. That was illegal batting? Batting. You notice when he batted the ball to try and get it to stop going in that one direction, and it was declined by Bloomington because they have excellent field position. Well, Bloomington now with 8 minutes, 28 seconds to go. We'll show this to you again. Watch right here as he races up there and throws the ball backwards, which is illegal. All right, first down, Zanoni over center, and you can watch him chasing the play at the line of scrimmage. Quick hit up the middle, Brian Kiley. And Kiley, the short game, 
About a yard or two. And Jeff Reine from his right tackle spot making the stop. Reine, a three-year starter. Possibly headed for Iowa. He can go just about wherever he's he wants. He's just about guy. can name his own spot. Uh, he's got all the tools. He's got great size, and he can play either side of the football. 7.45 to go. Still no score. Fourth quarter. Second down. Seven. Zanoni. Complete and out of bounds. It goes to Huffman. Huffman, his favorite receiver today, just steps right out of bounds. Close to the first down marker, but I don't think he got it. And for Jeff Huffman, a uh, little bit of a mistake because he knows where the uh, yard marker is and should have gotten that first. Well, here he's thrown again with that wind, and he's thrown that quick out. And Huffman, as you said, Mike, should have known where that first down marker was. But again, that's a timing around the three steps, so he can't run it any further because the ball's already in flight. So he has, usually it's five steps and you break it. Third and one. Ball's got to go across midfield for the first down. And again, it's Kylie, and Kylie has it with the clock at seven minutes, 30 seconds to go. Stopped by Josh Kelly, number 85. Some people aren't too pleased with the, uh, the mark. You always get a reaction from the fans. Check it again. Up. He does not have it. I said he had it. He does not. Well, he originally did have it. The spot uh, certainly looked like he did, Jack. But again, as they say, where you spot the ball. So it's fourth. And no, maybe the length of the football. No question here. Fourth and goal. And wedging him out of Zanoni. And Zanoni's got it this time. And I think he's going to just sit on that ball until the official comes over. Brandon Ramirez, the nose guard, making the stop. Well, there it is, first down. Technically speaking, the ball is marked not from where you reach when you fall. You oftentimes you'll see backs reach out with the ball, but the rule states that where your knee touches and you fall forward in a natural act, that's where the ball is marked. It's not how far you can reach out and put it. So oftentimes, I think fans think that it's as far as where that ball reaches, and that's not the true mark. At the seven-minute mark of the fourth period, first and ten. From the Newman 48, Bloomington Central. And once again, Zanoni this time has some room, and Zanoni got a 12th man down there in the field with the official. Fire it through the official. Brian Burr's making the stop. Game to the 42. Watch the, seven. watch the quarterback sneak there away from Ramirez. He went to the opposite side of the linebacker. You can see a nice block by the official for him. He cuts back using that screen. But that play was made because they were putting a stun on. They brought that linebacker out of the way, and he beat Ramirez for that A-gap. Second down three from the 41. Split backfield now. And Zanoni again. And he's up close to the first down. Brian Burr is making the uh, tackle at the 38-yard line. And again, we'll have a quick check here. They'll bring out the trains. Watch him cut behind that, uh, that linebacker that's uh, over-penetrating there. Nice job, and it's going to be a measurement here. Again, it's a very close mark for that first down. Clock at six minutes, three seconds to go in the scoreless game. And again, on this particular drive, this is going to, you know, the looks of it is one of those teams that whoever scores first might be the the team that wins it for sure each team has had its chances it's been a defensive struggle to this point and right now Bloomington has got the advantage with the clock and they have the football and they're driving Sterling Newman in the second quarter had fourth and less than one inside the 15 and Bloomington held Sterling Newman again was intercepted deep in Bloomington territory and Bloomington here on the march clock at 545 First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Zanoni looking out. And again, it's Huffman. And Huffman to the 27. Check it for 32. Quinones. Number 24 has had a busy day in the backfield. Again, just a three-step drop and throwing the ball out there. You can see here, one, two, three, plant and throw. And he's doing that quick out. He's throwing them into the wind, as you can tell by the rotation of that football. A nice seven five-yard game there. Second and five on the wing is Darrell Mitchell. Check it. He goes in motion. And 
Here's one mix up in the backfield. Messamore. Ryan Penn in motion. Messamore taking the handoff. Jamie McKinley, who's had a busy day, played very well making the stop there. Five minutes, 25 seconds to go. Brings up the third and seven. Well, also, let's think about this. A little scenario here. Bloomington has the all-state kicker. Todd Kurz. And, you know, if, if they are going to kick, they'll stay to the right hash mark so he'll be able to utilize that win and not have to kick into it. And the other thing is, Newman is not a passing team, so if they get the football back and not too much time, advantage to Bloomington. Receiver split left and right. Zanoni to throw. Looking for Huffman, and Huffman a little too far. All right, fourth down. And let's see if Mr. Kurz is uh, getting ready to make his entrance. Joe Passion, go ahead. One of the things that Todd Cruzy just told me but while he was warming up to kick off his longest field goal this year, 47 yards. When I asked him, how are you going to kick it with the wind? He goes, I hope I kick it straighter than the wind is showing. Well, he wanted you, fellas. Okay, Joe, thanks a lot. He wanted to go in, but uh, Dan Boynton is going to run this play as a regular play from the line. Meanwhile, they're going to take a timeout. They're going to go for this on fourth and seven. From the 35-yard line, we'll be back with the key play of the game in just a minute. All right, could be the ball game right here. Fourth and seven for Bloomington Central Catholic on the Sterling Newman 35. Split backfield, receiver split left and right. Zanoni to throw over the middle. Oh, Complete. great catch. First down, Bloomington Central. Josh Sherman, the tight end, injured, came back, made the grab, a key first down. Jason Graham making the stop. Tight end coming right in the seam right there. He gets the ball to him under very heavy pressure. Not a great throw, but a super catch. And the Bloomington fans, there are lots of them starting to whoop it up now. Clock under five minutes. We are in a scoreless ball game. First and ten for the Saints on the Sterling Newman. 27-yard line. That might be the biggest catch that a young man has made in his high school career. Well, he caught four during the regular season. Big one today. Looking on a go pattern for Darrell Mitchell overthrown. Quinones on the coverage. Second and ten. You know, this is a, a situation where during the ball game, when the quarterback comes out, of course, it disadvantages Zanoni is on the field all the time but you really talk to him about how effectively to throw into the wind and with the wind you try and stay on top of it to make him think about where you are as far as on the field do you have the wind with you or into your face and the routes you're throwing so that they can gear into that second down play Huffman out to the near side in the slot is Mitchell Zanoni Looking across the middle again, it is complete to Huffman, who broke his pattern and came back inside the 20. Jason Graham again on the stop. Just short, it appears, of the first down. It'll bring up a third. You can see him running out and clearing out and trying to come back in the curl mark and the hash mark right there. The linebacker overran him. You can see the linebacker right there overran him. He came underneath him on the hash and we call that an aiming point he comes back on the hash looking for the football so that Zanoni knows where he's at all the time from the landmark standpoint third and one from the 18 this time they send Mitchell to the left and the handoff to Brian Kiley Kiley's got the first down inside the 15 yard line John Crick makes the stop along with Ramirez the nose guard the clock at 345 Now, does he take any chances down here throwing the ball, or does he go conservatively running the ball so that he keeps the football on this side of the field? Because if he's going to end up kicking it, it's going to have to be coming from this angle. Because this is the way the wind, he has the advantage of the wind here. There's your clock. Three and a half to go. First and ten from the 15-yard line of Sterling Newman. And they go with the run with Brian Kiley, who hasn't found much running room, but so he's gotten a couple of yards at a crack. David Molina coming up to make the stop. Gain of one, second and nine. Jack, at least from first down, it would indicate that uh, what you were saying is what Dan Boynton's thinking. Well, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of the 
of the conditions and having an excellent kicker. And you can see he's getting warmed up there just by keeping that blood flowing. But uh, I think the conservative way here is to stay to this side of the field. So if he has to kick, he's got that win. Well, there's a lot to do in this offense. And Zanoni right away has a tip. That's what makes me nervous. I mean, you got an all-state kicker. I want to get something And you got an all-state tackle, right? Jeff Reindy coming through and knocking the ball down again. He's done it before. Watch the left tackle. Gets the hand up right there. And, you know, all of a sudden, 34 comes up and makes that play, and he's off to the races. So Let's you, give credit to, jo to Josh Kelly, actually, number 85, who batted the ball down that time. Third and nine from the 14. Now we'll see. Again, I'd be surprised here. I mean, if he incompletes the ball, we'll still come back to this hash mark. But... Uh, there's a conservative play to draw. And draw to Kylie, and Kylie loses a couple. More than a couple. He's back at the 19-yard line. Josh Kelly coming in, and here, as we look at Mike Pocosi, here is your ball game right here. Two minutes, 27 seconds to go. Todd Kurz is in the ball game, a junior kicker, only nine for 19 field goals, but that's because they routinely ask him to kick for more than 40 yards. Sterling Newman is going to try to freeze him, to ice him, and takes a timeout. But Kurz, uh, as uh, Joe told us, has kicked the 47-yarder. But I'll tell you that right now, the pressure is on the center, Jeff Flynn, because the snap has to be on the money. The snap is affected by the wind also. You know, the, the center snap on a punt or the extra point, that's a big factor because he's going to be snapping across that wind, takes a little bit, doesn't get the timing. You know, there's all kinds of consequences involved here. It's not as simple as it looks. Well, this is a wonderful moment, huh? It I mean, sure this, is. This is what the games, as they say, are all about. We're in a scoreless ball game. Two minutes, 20 to go in regulation. And Todd Kerr is all alone, just sitting there, lining it up, lining it up. Nobody's talking to him, right? Nobody wants to. He doesn't want to talk to anybody either, does he? Well, you know, the problem here is, that, you know, the kids and coaches will tell you after it's all over, I'd rather get blown out than lose three to nothing or seven, six, or one of those ball games because all you... You know, for the rest of your years, you're always saying, what if we did this and what if we did that? But it's a blowout. You don't even remember it. Tony Kylie, number four to hold, and he's got a big job to do. The kick will come from the 25, a 35-yard kick. Lynn took it. No! Nope, wide. Wide to the left. Well, Todd Kurz gave it a shot. Newman gave it the pressure, and the ball just it just hooked really left. it yeah. hooked left, and that wind is so strong. You know, even if he had rain, aimed at the right goal post to bring it in, like I do with my seven iron to bring it in, I hear you. He still missed it, so I mean that gives you significance. Plus, you know, as that ball got higher, the wind is a little stronger up there, and really had an effect on it. All right, so Sterling Newman with the chance here, with two minutes and change to go. Opening conservatively. So what do they do here? Do they hold and wait for overtime? Well, Newman, you know, is playing their game here. They've got two minutes. They could have a sustained drive, unlikely, unless they throw. Then the next scenario, overtime. What do you do? High school, everybody gets equal opportunity. We put the ball in the 10-yard line. I get four plays to score. If I, on fourth down, kick a field goal, you still get four plays. Now, you can match that field goal, or you can score a touchdown, whatever. But everybody gets four plays. So the first one to score does not win. Second down, seven yards to go. And Jay Crick out across the 25. It'll bring up a third down. Let's go back to Joe. Mike, you brought up a great point. Kylie, the holder, vital in that field goal attempt by Todd. And he kicked it far to his right. He really tried to hook it. But you saw what the wind did to it. And it appears with this running exhibition now being put on by Newman, we're going OT, fellas. I hope you're warm up there. Back up to you guys. Oh, we're more worried about you, Joe, actually. One minute, nine, and counting. Third and three. And you can bet if they don't make it here, Bloomington's going to take a timeout. And Jay Crick, with the second effort, I believe, has got that first down. Ryan Penn, Greg Connor making the stop. And it looks to be, yeah, it'll be a first down with 58 seconds to go. So all indications are, Jack, we're going to see, uh, going to see OT. Overtime. Yeah. What they do is they, there's a three-minute a, uh, three intermission. There's a coin flip. 
I win the toss. I have the choice. Do I want to receive the ball or take the ball first? Most teams will defer because I want to know what you do that so that I know what I have to do when I get the opportunity to take. Want to go last? 38 seconds to go now. And we're just running out the clock right now. Jason Graham running around. Stopped by Kenny Rhodes. And under 30 seconds to go. Well, as we look at it from a team standpoint, when you're on the 10 yard line, you add the 10 yards of the end zone, so you have 20 yards to deal with. Whose advantage is that? Is it an advantage to a passing team? Not necessarily because they don't have as much space to operate with. So the advantage would have to be with Newman, a strong running team. Uh, it's a little more of a disadvantage for that passing team because they don't have that much to work with. Well, there you see it. The clock has run out in regulation time, but we're still going here. That's the end of regulation. There is no score in the 1A championship game between Bloomington Central Catholic and Newman Catholic High of Sterling, Illinois. Well, both teams go back to their benches. And let's go back to Joe. One of the great things that you have to remember about this field is Bloomington Central Catholic has been playing their home games on this field. They played seven home games here already. You talk about how they balance their attack, and both of you guys have mentioned, yeah, they pass the ball. Can they do it from 10 yards out in four plays? Why not? They're used to this turf. Certainly, though, it does seem to benefit the option offense in keeping the ball on the ground. But then again, if we knew how it would come out, as an old coach once has said, why show up? That's why we're here to play the game. Watch how it shows up. And overtime always does it here. Bring it back up to you guys to finish it off. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. Newman has been through this before. Uh, one of their earlier games this season, they went two overtimes and lost 14 to 12. So uh, they obviously... Uh, but we it was. So, I mean, they, the advantage down here, you know, 10 yards, it's a, it's a situation where I think Newman does have the advantage. And they also have a, a passing offense. I mean, they, they don't like to show it as much, but they've got a very versatile quarterback in Jason Graham. Runs an excellent Newman, option Illinois pass. Uh, and then we'll have the coin toss right there. Mike Stiers there, is there, trying to get it. There's perfection. Yes, and those sir, officials right. practice. We wanted to see how the wind would affect the coin tosses, our director producer tells us. He wants to make sure he's got the right weighted coin there. Well, Jeff Huffman has uh, had quite a day. Number eight, the wide receiver from Wilmington Central. His uh, eight receptions has set a state playoff record. So congratulations to him. But I know what he's interested in is a W. And we'll see now if we get it. Well, you can see the official there explaining to coaches exactly what goes on. And there's Jeff Hoffman with the uh, new playoff record for 1A with eight receptions. And, of course, you have to contribute that record to the uh, other end of that tandem that's uh, throwing the football out there to him, which is Rob Ziani, the quarterback, who's played both sides of the football. But this will be interesting, this, this overtime. Each team is granted one more timeout. And you can carry your timeouts from that second half in there. So if Bloomington has two timeouts left, they get one more for overtime, so they have three. And uh, it's going to be real interesting here. You can see right there that they're going to hold off the, uh, the children of the 60s. Yes. I remember that insignia. Look out. When I was in high school, I didn't even have hair, hair on my face. More able, I was 25 before I had a beard or a mustache. Well, Jason Graham, very quick, probably the fastest player on this team. Uh, has an injured leg, but that, uh, that happened in the semifinal. Hasn't seemed to hurt him here. Very versatile. In that double overtime, by the way, he was not a quarterback. Jamie McKinley has had a busy day on the defensive line. Uh, play quarterback in that game. But Jason Graham, 5'10", 150 pounds. You're looking at his coach, Mike Poposi. For Poposi, this is the farthest he's been. And we're going to have the coin toss. Poposi, his 11th year here. And let's see what the... Uh, what Mike Stivers is going to do. It's interesting that we start off this weekend of state championships with an overtime in the very first football game that hopefully is a prelude to the games to come. You can see they've had one here seven years ago. I remember seeing that ball game. It was a great football game. I've been down here every year for these games. 
and uh, we've had some interesting games, interesting weather. Mike Paposi went to Elmhurst College but graduated from the school he's coaching now. Went to Sterling uh, Newman High School. Does that mean he didn't graduate from Elmhurst? Or? White has <laughs> won the toss and chose to go on defense. We play at that goal. That's what okay. we talked about. Right. They wanna... Newman wants to go last, so Bloomington Central will take the ball at the opponent's 10-yard line. They will have four plays. Do what you want. Now, if there's an interception of a pass, if there's an interception, it's just like just like a regular play. They've lost. They've lost uh, possession, and uh, the other team can score down right. the other end. And, and uh, a misconception is if you score in two plays, no, I don't have to score in two plays. I can take all four plays to score. I, you get four plays to do it in. Okay. Well, Sterling Newman coming out now. The team in white. There you see Bloomington Central. And there's school colors. Navy, white and gold. Dan Boynton took over from John McIntyre and has got them back in the championship game three years later. And that man, Mike Paposi, had him in the quarterfinals a couple of years ago. Lost to uh, the team that eventually won it. Lost to Orangeville actually last year. Orangeville, as you saw on Sports Channel, won it. So here we go. First down. Interesting. Overtime. Which, which goal is picked by Bloomington also, uh, the one that they can use to win the game, too. And Messamore doesn't get much. Jason Messamore stopped by Josh Kelly. Another no thing huddle. to remember that the Sterling Newman has not kicked a field goal all year. Back to pass. And overshot Huffman brings up the third down. Jason Graham on the defense. And once again, Jamie McKinley was right there and he laid a lick on Rob Zanoni just as he let that ball go. They've been putting a lot of pressure on him. And the, the advantage is the strength of that Newman defensive line is quite a bit bigger than Bloomington. And you can see how they ram in here and they've got that height and they get that hands up right there but they're getting a lot of pressure in there and that was a poorly thrown pass but the conditions are making that the one case. of the reasons why he was rocked just as he let the ball go so here we go third down from the nine there he Looking is oh. for Messamore this time and overshot him so Mr. Kurz got a flag will come on but we do have a penalty flag Andy Miller on the coverage for uh, Newman and the penalty it looks like it's going to go against Bloomington to be declined by Sterling Newman that'll bring up a fourth down illegal motion decline fourth down well now there's the kicker you got to get points out of it what happened on this was he turned up field too soon that was the illegal motion but uh, so now he's way out of the end zone there. So now we'll see if he learned anything from that that earlier kick, if he's going to have to gauge it. I mean, those goal posts are actually swaying. So, I mean, he's going to have to kick it well to the right to hope to bring it back in. Now he's closer this time. He'll be kicking it from about 24 yards away. Here we go. And this time he is true. Todd Kerr's. No doubt about that one. But we are not through yet. Sterling Newman has a chance. Well, there's the advantage uh, of being second. You know what you have to do. Uh, they know that on fourth down, there's a timeout on the field. They know on fourth down that they could uh, kick a field goal to tie it. Out of Kylie's hold. See, he oh, yeah, no doubt about that one. 24 yards, make it 26 yards away. 26-yard field goal for Todd Kurz, and there are the Newman fans. They're giving their team encouragement. After all that time, 48 minutes and change, 3-0. Bloomington Central is timeout on the field while Bloomington will go on defense. Here you can see it. That's the, uh, that's the item right there. The first team to score and hold the opponent wins this one. Let's go down to Joe. 
One thing you may have noticed on that second field goal effort by Todd is he came more in a roundhouse motion than he did the first time. And that allowed him to hook it in. Another point, Jack, you may have brought this up earlier. I may have missed this on your part. How Newman decided to go on defense first. They put the pressure on Bloomington Central Catholic to score first. They did. Let's see how Newman counters. Back up to you guys. All right, Jason Gray and John Crick, David Molina, Jay Crick. Those are the backfield members. In the wishbone. And this is Molina. To about the seven-yard line. That first play is a big one to get that uh, distance. You know, if you end up in that first down getting no yards or losing yards, it's tough. But if you can get three or four yards in that very first play, you're in good shape. Well, they did that. They got three. Jim Conklin, Chad Toma making the stop. And I would imagine they're going to use that right side of the line, Riney and Highbarger, in a key situation such as this in second down. And there it goes. Ooh, good effort. And an excellent effort by Jay Crick inside the five, maybe about the two, and you know where he went, right over the right side. So we are, they mark it at the two. Watch him dive here. Right there. That's a great effort, but he lands on his feet and keeps on going. There's where he marked, went down there, so that was a super effort. We've got third down and goal from the two. Time out. And we get another timeout right here. Bloomington Central with a 3-0 lead. Looks very precarious at this moment. There's there is Jeff Reine, a three-year starter. Would love to go out with a state championship. He is a Division I prospect. We told you that. He and his teammates were so close a year ago. And this year, they have come about as far as they can come. Two more yards, and they have it. For well, Bloomington Central, two more yards, and hold them. I'd be real surprised if they don't run to the right. Yeah. You have to go to the dance and dance with who brung you. And he's the one that brought him down here to be an all-state tackle with that kind of size. And, of course, with a full house backfield, they got an awful lot of people going to that side. So they got here two downs go. to make two yards. Here we go. Ray in the quarterback. And the give us to Crick again. Jay Crick, is he in? Newman thinks so. No official signal yet. One yard line. They, they ran mark to the it right. at the one. They mark it at the one. It is coming down to fourth and one. Look at this. Oh my. Oh my. Well, he got one on that, so now in the last play of the game, if he gets one going to the right, timeout Bloomington. Dan Boynton coming out to talk to his men. Not much you can tell him here except, come on, guys. Well, let's take a look at the right side here. They're down blocking, wedge blocking. Look at Rainey right in there, 77, driving his man into the end zone. Now, that's why they want to run behind him. Nice job of the corners closing down, but they needed that yard, and they got it. And I got to think they're going to come back with the same type of play going right behind that big right tackle. Ed Williamson, number 70 for Bloomington Central, coming in to make that stop. He had some help. But here we go. This is it. It all comes down to this one play. Sterling makes it. Sterling Newman makes it. Newman High School wins. They don't. Goes to Bloomington Central Catholic. See the excitement right there in those cheerleaders. Here we go. Look at that Bloomington line. Jay Craig goes in. State championship. Jay Crick gives Sterling Newman the 1A title. Bedlam in Bloomington. They're nuts and normal. And things have come up sterling. Very good. And they ran behind that big all-state tackle, Jeff Riney, and he was in with room to spare. Great football game. Outstanding defense by both teams. Stupendous. What a game. Hope you enjoyed it with us. Great crowds down here. Looks like Newman cleared out the town. Mike Faposi, he's got his championship he nearly got last year. 
And the teams shake hands. True sportsmanship. Let's show you the winning touchdown again in overtime. It's going to be coming to the right side, right at the camera, right here. Look at Power going right in there and a great effort to get across, and he's in there by three yards. Jay Crick, the leading ball carrier for this team all year long. Let's watch the lineman on this play. Notice him blocking down. Bloomington's getting under their pads, but just powers his way in with a great effort. Gets right into that seam. Those linemen are trying to get underneath each other's pads. It's a chess match to try and drive them out of there. And David Molina, who, uh, correct me, just by a couple of yards, uh, the leading ball carrier leading Jay Crick into the end zone. And there is a happy Mike Paposi, graduate of this high school. Now he's coached him to a state championship. There may be a few tears down there. That's certainly understandable. We'll be back with more. Well, in overtime, Newman High School of Sterling, Illinois is the Class 1A champion. 6-3 to three over Central Catholic High of Bloomington. There are the happy comments right there. Jeff Reine, the fine, fine offensive and defensive lineman. This is a team with 17 starters back out of the 22. Of course, a lot of those are the same people, offense and defense. They play eight people both ways, as you would expect in in a smaller school, and they are quite a small school, only 230 students total, and they play some kind of football, as does Bloomington Central. Boy, did they have a game today. Well, this was a, a, a defensive coach's dream. Both teams played extremely well. The size of Newman negated by the quickness of Bloomington, and uh, they just both played extremely well on the defensive side of the ball and negated each other's offense. Neither... Uh, uh, Sterling Newman had never played on the turf before, this being the uh, home field, in effect, for uh, Bloomington Central. It affected, though, both teams. I, I certainly thought that Bloomington's passing game was affected by the win, as they have a much more diverse attack. And there are the Bloomington Central uh, captains getting ready to get their second-place medals. And they don't look too happy right now, but you think about what they did, and I'm sure they'll feel a little bit better tomorrow. Well, half the battle you know, after 14 games, is to get down here to get the opportunity to play for that state championship. This is a memory they'll have that, with them for the rest of their lives. And there is the state runner-up trophy in Class 1A. They've won state twice before, once in 1A, once in 2A. And they've got a very young team. I would not be surprised if we don't see them next year. Well, you know, I, w I was really surprised that uh, that Bloomington played as well as they did defensively against uh, Newman because Newman really outsized them on the offensive line and even with the backs. And uh, Bloomington played a, a tremendous defensive game. Uh, Sterling Newman now getting ready to receive its trophy and its medals. And Jeff Ryan will lead him up along with Brian Burrs, number 61. And there he is, John Crick. An outstanding football game. And to see especially uh, the level of competition from these schools really showed something here in the final. You know, a young man that I thought really played an outstanding game, and this is one of those deals where coaches talk about, well, wait till I see the tapes, but I really thought Ramirez, number 31, the nose, nose guard for the uh, Newman defense, played an outstanding job enforcing um, the passing game to be rushed where they went to that three-step drop. I mean, he was in their face constantly. Ramirez, excellent. Andy Miller also got to give him some credit at defensive back. Jose Canonis. Uh, defender did well, and of course Jason Graham, who's quarterback, turns safety. Uh, an excellent team effort by Newman. Let's take a look at the final drive. In effect, it's a drive. Uh, in overtime, of course, you start at the 10-yard line. Bloomington Central had kicked a field goal, and now going last, Sterling Newman has to score. Well, they're going right behind the, uh, you know, those big two running backs and that X guard at fullback, and, the, and a crucial play in overtime is that first play, and they pick up three yards yeah. here, and that's a very, very important play. All right, second down again. They'll stay on the ground. Watch the linemen, the right side right there. Watch them get on Cochran, who's, 
who had an outstanding game, number 50, Jim Cochran, really had a great football game, but they really get on him and negate him from getting to the ball carrier. Watch yeah, the lineman again, third down. blocking down. Look at Rainey, number 77, driving his man into the end zone. That takes him down to the one yard line. And so it all came down to fourth and one. Fourth and one, and, and with a power team like this, I feel that they had such great confidence in themselves, it was all academic. Watch them drive three, four yards into the end zone, and there again is that big all-state tackle, number 77, Jeff Reine, who they ran behind to get that uh, touchdown in overtime. So that's the way it ends. Six to three. Sterling Newman Catholic, the winner. Here's the touchdown again. And he crosses that line with room to spare. No score at all during the 48 minutes of regulation. Bloomington Central had a chance to win it with a field goal that uh, went wide left in the middle of the 35 mile an hour wind. And Todd Kerr's kick one in the overtime, but the touchdown turned the game around. Let's go down to Joe Passion with winning coach Mike Faposi. Well, while the excitement is already rising for the 2A championship game, one state trophy has already been awarded. Congratulations, Mike. But going into overtime, what changes did you have to make once they kicked the field goal? Well, the only changes we had to make was, you know, we had to just tell the kids that we wanted six. You know, we were, we're a running team, a power team, and we just felt nobody could hold us out at 10 yards, and uh, they came mighty close. But uh, the kids showed a lot of determination, and... Uh, you know, we didn't even think about going for a field goal ourselves. The kids would have killed me if I'd have said that. You know, they wanted to macho the ball in, and uh, I'm just so happy for everybody. Everybody's been great to us, and Bloomington sh certainly sh shouldn't hang their heads. They're a great team, and they're young. They're going to be back for somebody. Your interior defensive linemen really seem to force Bloomington Central Catholic out of its passing game, maybe rushed it into mistakes. What adjustments did you go about at halftime to have that happen in the second half? Well, we really didn't make any adjustments. We just told the kids they're going to have to turn it up a notch. We thought they were flat, you know, in the first half. We played flat, and, uh, you know, we just kind of gave them a little rah-rah speech at halftime, told them to turn it up a notch because we needed to get in the guy's face. Uh, he's an excellent thrower. Their timing patterns are, you know, we didn't think they'd kill us, but they, they certainly sustained drives for them. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to make sure we could get some hands on the ball and, and hopefully get some pri more pressure than that on them and sack them once in a while to let them think about our defense. Mike and Jack have already told our viewers that you haven't played a game on AstroTurf except this year, despite practicing at Northern Illinois University's field. How did this field affect the game outside of the wind itself? Oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's we slipped around a little, especially at the beginning of the, of the game, but uh, you know, I really don't think it would have affected it any. Uh, we would have played it anywhere, just like their coach said, but, you know, uh, the... The AstroTurf itself is great. It's good. It's good footing, and you know it's the same for everybody. It's, there's no excuses there. The, the wind was definitely, uh, you know, that probably helped us more than it did them. I'm sure the way they like to throw the ball, but uh, you know that's God. That's up to God, not us. Well, speaking of him, uh, he was here on both sides, according to priests from both schools. The uh, Bloomington Central Catholic play to the uh, the Queen of Victory, and you guys had your own special prayers today. Tell us about that. Well, we our our Father Paul Lipinski is kind of our uh, football head man as far as God comes. Uh, he's been with us all year. It's his first year, and he's been instrumental in getting a lot of these kids, uh, I guess you could say, spiritually involved in the game. And kind of our motto all year is Newman has an end in the beginning and a Newman at the end, and in between we want to be a complete man from from end to end, and, and that's kind of what we're, our model has been spiritually this this uh, year, and he certainly made a difference for our kids, and uh, I know, you know the Lord looked over us some today, and we certainly thank him for that. Hey, well, Joe, can I, I don't know if you have a, a ticket to go to Disneyland, but uh, Mike, what's your question? I just wanted you to ask Coach Paposi. He has really been bitten by the... Uh, by the penalty bug and turnover bug, and it looked that way uh, to uh, to start and uh, start the second half of this game too. I was wondering what he thought of uh, of uh, the penalties that he took and the roughing the uh, roughing the punter and then the uh, the turnover on the kickoff. Mike Leader wants to know about how the penalties affected your game plan. It seemed they stung you a little bit early on. We've been doing that all year. We just you know we didn't have hardly any this this week compared to what we usually have. So. Uh, you know, I was kind of happy. I don't know how many we had, but it didn't seem like there were that many out there. But uh, the turnovers hurt us. You know, we were driving the ball in the second half pretty good. And, you know, for some reason, we are getting the ball uh, kind of messed up on the exchange of our option. And we haven't done that all year. So, uh, you know, I guess you can attribute their defense, which was they, they showed us something different every time, it seemed like. So uh, 
it made it hard for our linemen to pick up everybody. Well, I know you have a celebration and a parade waiting for you back in Sterling. Congratulations to you and your entire group, and have a good time tonight celebrating your championship today. Thank you very much. All right, Mike, a great job there by Sterling Newman. They've got a 1A state championship they're bringing home today, and let's go back upstairs to Mike and Jack. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. We'll be back with some final comments. Wrap things up here in the 1A championship in a minute. Well, in overtime, Sterling Newman defeated Bloomington Central Catholic 6-3. to three. A thrilling game, Jack, I got to tell you. Well, it certainly does start off this weekend of football down here in Bloomington with an, a very exciting football game. It was a, a great game for the defensive standpoint. And, of course, to come down in overtime makes it all worthwhile. And the win, the win, the win. It was very much a factor here. I think it may be blowing us away. Uh, the overtime, they started out. Bloomington Central got the 26-yard field goal by Todd Kurz. Kurz had missed a little longer one toward the end of regulation. That would have won it for the Saints. And then coming back with the march on, with the big backs, with the big linemen, and uh, Sterling Newman did it. Well, we really talked about that as we were uh, waiting for the overtime to begin. The advantage certainly was to Newman, and they did take advantage running behind that big right side of that offensive line behind Rainey, that 6'4", 250-pounder. They had a great football game, and they deserve the state championship. All right, the 2A game coming up with Tom Stocker and Bill Gorley. We'll be back this afternoon with the 3A contest. We're going to show you a back who scored 39 touchdowns and rushed for nearly 3,000 yards all in one season. Coming up, Jim Blaney takes an in-depth look at the 2A matchup on the Sports Channel Report. That's coming up next. The executive producer is Steve Corman. Today's game has been produced and directed by Bob Albrecht. Remote facilities provided by Trio Video of Chicago. Stay tuned next for the Class 2A Championship football matchup live from Hanson Stadium in about 15 minutes from Hancock Stadium. The Sports Channel Report is next for Jack McInerney and Joe Passion. I'm Mike Lederman. Once again, the final score, Sterling Newman, 6, Bloomington Central Catholic, 3. So long, everybody.